you have a good vacation? <laughs> I did. I guess did it count as vacation for well, you? I don't even know. Well, last week was President's Day, after all. Oh, okay, yeah. See, and both of us being co-presidents. <laughs> co sorry, co-super presidents. <laughs> co-super presidents, of course. Yeah. We had an opportunity to take a day off, you know, relax. Yeah, I, w I was never sure because uh, Canadian holidays don't always sync up with American holidays. Yep. So, yeah, apparently Americans had a holiday themselves, but it was different than ours. For super earth and democracy. <laughs> Sorry, manage democracy. Yeah. That's, it's important that we, we That's the most specify important part. manage democracy. So, I've got a question for you. Okay, shoot. What is wrong with this picture? Uh, I don't know. There's a camera. Camera. There's, there's chat. I think there's a chat. There's, we've got our wallpaper. We've got our lights. <laughs> I don't know what else. You need your glasses? I need my glasses. <laughs> I've got mine. Where's yours? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Gina and, Serene says Jack has a Coke. <laughs> and you're like very in frame, and Jack is like quite tilted to the... Uh, oh, well... Tilted, tilted into the wall. I don't know. Flip the viewfinder and see if you can fix that. Just don't off-center it too much. Apple shop. <laughs> Jay Tanuki says that you're slightly... You're in the wall. Killed her. Man is, can see too much wall. There you go. Okay. So much wall. All the wall. All right. Wall. There we go. All the wall of the rainbow. I'm sure that looks better. Now, you can see? Yes. Then we may continue. We can. <laughs> How is everyone tonight? Yeah, lovely to see everyone in the chat there. A lot of Lots of colors flying by there. It's always good at the start of the show. It's quite possible that the speed of my passage just caused the camera to turn. <laughs> Yeah, just, As it slowly traveled back in time. Just whipped right past it. Right. And it just spun around in a circle. It's what they call in the industry a whip pen. Is that what that is? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, how's it going? Uh, I'm doing all right. Good. It was nice to have uh, nice to have the day off uh, yep. last Monday. Got some gaming done. Yep. Uh, not much, but, you know, I mean, when can you ever get enough gaming in your in your life? Uh, I don't know. You can oh, tell unless, me. Unless you're writing a, uh, a walkthrough like you've done oh, before. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> yeah, I was actually doing some of that last week. But, uh, yeah, that's all done with. We're, we're into the next set of things now. Yeah, the next round. Um, yeah, so I guess to to start that off, obviously, as I was talking the, the week prior to that, we were playing Kingdom Hearts 3. Okay, you're stacking the chat now with family. Hey, whoa, whoa. I'm sensing I... a bias because Gaming Grammy says uh, Dan looks awesome, but she's biased. Hey, at least she admitted it. That's the important part. I guess that's part. fair. It's fair. Yeah, there's there's no betting going on behind the scenes or anything, so no. nothing to worry about. I don't think that's on the bingo card. <laughs> well, I'll have to make a new bingo card then. Um, but anyways, yeah. Speed and pass so, in the same uh... sentence, tempting the cold hand of fate. This isn't Final Destination. <laughs> Anyway, all right, what have you um, been playing? Yeah, so Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah. Obviously, I was talking about it before. Yes. Uh, I'm ready to... I can actually go back to Kingdom Hearts now. Yeah, there you go. You, yeah. have, you have the time to do it. That's and I suggest you do, because Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, is just awesome. Yep. It is, yeah. It, it is really, really well done. It's an amazing-looking game. Yeah. Uh, you didn't say we finished it. Oh, what's yeah. that? You didn't say we finished it. I'm getting there. Jeez, would you leave me alone? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh, Jay Tanuki. I didn't know you wanted to write the script for me. <laughs> Anyways, um, we've got to fire her off our non staff. Yeah, exactly. Really? That should be fairly easy to do. I would think. <laughs> You'd be surprised at how difficult it is to let someone go who doesn't actually work here. <laughs> it is a shocking amount of paperwork. It's only as difficult as you make it. Um, exactly. But, anyways, uh, yeah, so we were playing through it, finish it off, and that's why I can definitely say that it is <laughs> an amazing end to, end to that series. Um, it's just it's just the right amount of ridiculous story, yep. cheesy voice acting, Fair. amazing visuals. Like okay. some of the shit you see in that is just fucking spectacular. Yeah, and um, it's just just a really well rounded game. Like in the in the previous games, a lot of it was the classic Disney movies that it sure. kind of you played in those worlds and everything. With the new one, it feels like a fully modern game because. A lot of the worlds you go to are mm -hmm. the more modern movies. So you go to Big Hero 6, and you go to Frozen, and Pirates of the Caribbean, and stuff like that. I was that, a little so. surprised what Sora did in Eyes Wide Shut World, but... Well, we won't talk about that one. That's that's a special... Spoilers! You, you have to view for yourself. <laughs> or don't. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it, it's a really, really fun game. Um, it's definitely... It definitely shows that they spent 
a lot more time building this game than they did with the previous two or some of like the various you know handheld console ones right. and stuff like that because yeah again the visuals the controls uh just the depth to the game is so much more in this one compared to some of the previous ones yep um yeah and obviously i'm not going to say anything about the ending at all because you have to view it for yourself but have you actually finished it's, it yes oh, we, okay. we fully finished it um we went in and did some of the extra stuff we haven't like 100 percent completed it i don't know if i'm going to go in and do every single fucking thing because some of it is kind of monotonous uh mm -hmm. just like you know a game of that size there's going to be some filler in there that you you know do it if you want but uh it's you know it's not for everyone what kind of filler um well, one of the examples is, like, uh, Jay Tanuki, he wants to talk to you. <laughs> I don't know, he's pointing at something. I, I... <laughs> you want to turn that light on? Which, oh, that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where the... It's over there. <laughs> it's over in the thing? Yeah. It's in the electrical room. Um, next to the alligator. One, one of the, the... Don't worry, the she's fillery... fired now. <laughs> one of the fillery kind she's of things. She's going to touch it. Yep. It's gonna, is that the trapdoor one? I mean, sh <laughs> don't touch the one marked bees. <laughs> Never touch the switch marked bees. That's the one. There you go. There you we did are. it. Yay. Um, yeah. So the filler. Yes. Uh, one of the filler things. Again, depends on what you want to do in the game. I know there's lots of people that really enjoyed this part of it. Uh, I'm not as big of a fan of it, even though it looks really good. Is like in Breath of the Wild. You can cook food on the fly, and then you, when you eat it, you get buffs. Like, you can last yes. in the cold longer, or you get better stamina or something like that. They literally put the <laughs> exact same thing in Kingdom Hearts 3. That's not surprising. But it's you get to cook at a fancy high-end restaurant with Remy from uh, Ratatouille. <laughs> okay. I can see that. Yeah, so that you literally, as you're going around, I don't know if you've seen the memes about Donald saying, I think we can find recipe stuff here or whatever, like all those things. Literally every single world you go to, random points in the world, Goofy or Donald will yep. say, I bet we can find ingredients see, here. And you That's a missed opportunity, though. You should have had Donald go, <laughs> you know, like, well, it's, I mean, it's horrendous I don't do the sounding voice. either way. It's, yep. <laughs> you can barely hear what he's saying anyways other than ingredients. Yep. But yeah, you literally, as you're going through the entire game, you can collect different ingredients from every single place you visit, and then you can build uh, more and more dishes that are on the menu, and you can complete them to get, like, a trophy. And then, of course, the dishes that you prepare, you can take with you, and you can eat them for different buffs during battle and, and whatnot. Sure. So it's kind of cool, again, that they put that in there, but it's one of those neat kind of games that, like, there's so much content in it, but you really only have to do the content that you, that you want to do. There's other people that they don't like the gummy ship part of it mm -hmm. and they made it so that it is really non-intrusive there's only a few parts where you really have to do stuff with the gummy ship and it's fairly straightforward so the people that don't want to partake in the gummy ship stuff they really only have to do a few missions with it and then they're done with it uh but if you want to you can pursue that to the end of the fucking game and it is probably one of my favorite parts of the entire <laughs> fucking game <laughs> okay uh but we'll we could talk a bit more about that at the end of the show um with my uh steal this no. idea so gummy g-u-m-m-i mm. yeah gummy close enough like gummy bear so they uh so they don't get sued i guess or whatever <laughs> or i well, guess it's their own branding yeah. technically well i mean they they own the rights to the cartoon i don't know how the what the status of the the actual candy is i'm assuming it's, it's, it's disney by... they probably bought them already <laughs> or just paid them to shut up if they ever mentioned it right who knows um but yeah so uh absolutely spectacular game if you're into kingdom hearts at all you'll thoroughly enjoy it um i've read some some mixed reviews online, but I think it's just the the people that were just kind of jaded from, years. yeah, there was way yeah. too much hype, or they waited too long, and they were just kind of like, eh, it's not really what I wanted, and, and mm -hmm. you know, it's like, fuck off. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but anyways, uh, outside of that, um, I haven't played a lot of it, but I have been enjoying Apex Legends. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you've kind of jumped into much that. Of it, no. not, okay. A little bit, not much. Uh, but thoroughly enjoying that one, because again, it's one of those situations like we've talked about before. Uh, <clears throat> you take you take a genre that becomes you know the hot topic, and then it's better when everyone kind of dives in because everyone will kind of like put their own spin on it, or they'll just try to copy it and it'll just be a copycat and it'll be boring. But with this one, they did it right because they took battle royale, but they made it something that's actually interesting to play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, because of the the three person squads, 
the weapon and character selection, because again, uh, I, I can't remember if we had mentioned this, but basically when you're playing it, it's a little more like playing Battle Royale in Overwatch. Sure. Because each character has their own special abilities and stuff. You're not just diving in as, you know, generic soldier number one mm-hmm. and then just finding weapons or whatever. Yeah, like, like a hero shooter. Yeah, so you can, you can go in and you can balance that team really well, or if you're idiots and, you know, the other guy took the guy that you wanted, then you can just try to take a shitty guy and then screw your team over. I, I just want to unpack this statement here. Uh, when you shoot people, they don't turn into an eight-story building. Oh, yes. Yeah, and Hate Machine, had, I think he had posted that that tweet in the chat before or something like that, but that was probably the best example of what you do in Fork Knife, is that you sure. shoot at someone and they turn into an eight-story building. That's about right. <laughs> you know, suddenly they're taking up uh, architecture and, you know, yeah. Never like, fight a contractor. Oh, I'm taking damage. I better start carpentry. <laughs> yeah. See, if this was a real thing, they would have to get permits. You know, they would have to get clear it with the city. You know, that would make for a really slow battle royale. Wait, it's, wait, it's, stop shooting me. I got to build something. Yeah. But gotta go cut the red tape first. And the contractor's <laughs> like, well, you know, we could get it done fast, but hey, we get, <laughs> gotta keep permits filed and all oh, my guys are tired and we're on break in 20 minutes is that a, uh, is that a bullet bearing wall over there yeah. <laughs> uh but anyways yeah so thoroughly enjoying that one uh, for the little bit that i've played it i definitely want to get more into that one mm. just because again it's it's one of those ones you can tell it already has a great community under it um and again it just sets itself apart like that and they are they've already shown that they're adding more and more content they've already been talking about uh, possibilities of like some new characters that they want to add. They've already added a new weapon. They're mm-hmm. already talking about new uh, training grounds that they want to add so that you can actually test out more of your abilities and everything before the game. So definitely looking forward to all that content because right now when you when you jump in, it's a lot of flash and then you're just like, okay, this is awesome. I can see where it's going, but there's going to be room for so much more awesomeness in that game. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Cool. And I didn't have to give EA a single cent. So <laughs> Yeah, but they're earning money regardless. I mean, yeah, there's going to be other yeah. people that are, you know, you know, paying their way, but whatever. It's all good. How are you short on pylons already? Didn't you get like the six pack of pylons when they were on sale? <laughs> it's a limited time offer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what have you been up to? Well, uh, I finished off, of course, last week. Uh, we were out. So the, mm-hmm. it was like two weeks ago. There was a bunch of stuff I couldn't talk about. Right. And it all dropped in the intro. And I was going to say, yeah. Right. So so I, f- I finished off Far Cry New Dawn and I got the platinum for that. Like Holy crap. So you just went from before it was zero, even to, out. zero to 100. Oh, yeah. Before <laughs> it was even out. I mean, that was an easy one. It was a, it was a smaller game. It was, a, uh, I think, a $49 title. Okay. So I think it's What's, like 39 What US. like total time for like a platinum? Oh, I don't know. It was like uh, average for a Far Cry. But it, the weird thing about it was, I wouldn't say weird, but the different thing about it was rather than having a lot of story missions it had a lot of uh mechanical systems that interacted that sort of gave you content to do so you oh, have okay. to um go and attack this base right and mm-hmm. uh, the way you got certain crafting materials was uh like certain ones in particular like uh, i think uh it was ethanol or something which was the fuel essentially okay. but uh the only way to get that was to attack enemy strongholds and when you attacked them uh, you got so much and then you could then uh sacrifice them basically you, you scavenge them for stuff and you leave and they reoccupy it but they they f- like fortify it oh okay. so it becomes stronger and then stronger and the more bigger it gets the more likely you are to scavenge better materials okay so uh does that does that go on forever or is there a point no. where they just stop like i think after the third or fourth iteration and that's the highest it goes and you'll just get that amount all the but time. they'll always occupy yeah. it though so you right. can always go back for more material yep. if you need it that's right and then there are uh expeditions which are like uh little self-contained missions to other p- other maps entirely mm-hmm. so there's like one that goes to alcatraz like literally alcatraz okay and uh there's one that goes to like this crashed plane it's like actually it's a uh it's a fourth echelon plane that has like <laughs> notes in it, like little uh, notes from like Sam Fisher and whatnot. Those are look... just like small separate maps, yeah, basically. Yeah, like... exactly. Like little self contained areas. This was like a bayou and had a crash plane, and you could actually get like a Sam Fisher costume okay. that you can wear. It's pretty awesome. But uh, it, it all sort of takes like it, it, under the conceit that, okay, there was a big nuclear war and the United States is fucked. Right. So uh, all these places are just ravaged by nuclear war, so or nuclear, as and, they say. And everyone places. broke out the neon smoke to, yeah. to mark everything and <laughs> so, spray paint everything pink and blue. But basically, uh, Far Cry New Dawn is an interesting take. It was very much like a U- Ubisoft Assassin's Creed-style take 
on a Fallout game. Okay. So it had a lot of crafting, it had a lot of uh, good gunplay, and, and, and man, I was really missing having those guns coming back to some of the other games I'm playing afterwards. So, uh, <laughs> no, are they were like really creative weapons? Or... No, it's just that you, you had the ability to uh, level them up and you could improve them with additional crafting materials and oh, whatnot. Okay. So you could build them up and up and up. So not only could you build like uh, four different tiers of weapons, but you could then... After you've gotten the the big weapon, you can then spend additional crafting materials to improve its stats. So is it is it the type of thing like you get like a basic assault rifle, but then right. you can put on like, you know, like a better barrel, a, a scope, a bigger clip, like no. that kind of thing, or is it just improve in damage and range? It, exactly. And, oh, okay. Yeah. But I mean, you pick which one has the type of thing you want. So if you want a silenced weapon, it's this. Yeah. If you want a silenced SMG, you want blah blah blah. But then you can just improve the stats from there. Hmm. But uh, after that, after I was thoroughly satisfied with far cry and completed that and put it aside i started on metro exodus oh yeah jesus christ okay lay it on me yeah i mean it's different it's definitely a different take yeah. it's more like stalker than the okay. original metros because the first few missions are very linear very like claustrophobic and then after that you uh are out in the wilderness right and it is like a huge map yeah, because Stalker, you Stalker all that's over. literally what you right. did, was it's just like, here's Chernobyl, go. Like, right. that, that was it. <laughs> so you go all over this huge map for something like the next 20-something hours, and then you get on the, the, the train again, and you go to a different huge map. Oh, okay. And there's, like, different levels like that. I have not yet finished the game. I am I don't even know how many hours into it, but uh, this is literally only the, the third or fourth level is this big area, mm -hmm. but then it's like you do like 14 something missions in it. So is it, That's is an it, exaggeration. Is it kind lot. of like the same concept as the original games where it had like in the loading screens in between missions, you had like the map where you were traveling along the metro yeah. to the different areas. They were just much smaller because they were typically in the metro, in tunnels, in caves, right. and sewers. Well, yeah, it's like the, the, it's the same kind of hub and spoke thing, basically. Yeah. Except, but this is just like each time you hit one of those points, instead right. of it being this big, it's this big. Exactly. <laughs> you get off the train and it's like, what about? Okay. So, yeah. Uh, granted, the, the load times for the game are horrendous. Oh, yeah. But once it, they, once it does load, mm -hmm. like, it doesn't do it it's again. It's seamless then. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it, kind of like what uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 did. Like, right. Right at the beginning, it was like, oh my god, what is this going to yeah. load? You sit, you sit there for like two minutes, yep. but then you can walk around for four hours in this yep. gigantic map, and it never has exactly. to load again. And, and the graphics are fantastic, which both are good and bad things, depending on what's coming at you. <laughs> of course. Because they are not pretty now. Because the horrors are just that no. much horrific now, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, and they're very similar to what you saw in the past. You had the Watchmen, you had the, the Shrimp with their big sucker faces and pinchers. Yeah. And, do yeah. they have those creepiest fuck librarians or whatever? I've not the... found them yet, but I'm only assuming. Is that, that what I will. they are, librarians? Yeah, librarians. yeah the they giant were... mutant gorilla things. Yeah, that'll like smash your face in in like one hit. <laughs> they were nasty as fuck, but yeah, I. I they it was were... like they were bad enough, yeah. but the fact that they were in like pitch black buildings and sewers and stuff like that just made it that much worse. <laughs> you had to go around with your night vision on, moving very very slowly. Yeah, exactly. You didn't yeah. want to anger them or anything, but yeah. yeah, even then they would just you look at them wrong and they're like ah, and they just knock your oh, head. Oh, and thank you for the follow. The name is Bond. The name is Bond. James Bond. Welcome to the chat and thank you very much for that follow. Thank you, sir. Um, so. Okay, so I have to ask, though, because... Oh, and a new host from Captain Quench. Oh, thank Welcome you very much. Welcome to the stream, much. Captain Quench. Thanks for the host. Can you get a shout-out for Captain Quench? And, and hello, and of, TK. And, of course, for TK Star. Um, okay, I have to ask. Yes. Because this was always a thorn in my side with the previous games. Gas masks and filters. Yes and what, no. What of them in this game? Because I was always I was confused by the trailer because it, it looked like you had some fresh air right. in this trailer. That's the interesting part about it, and I'm not going to tell you why. Okay. But there are parts of the world where you do not have to wear a gas mask all the time. Okay. Now, here's the other part about it that's yep. even more interesting. Uh, Metro has a crafting system. Okay. You can make filters. Nice. I like that yes. much better. <laughs> yes. So you still have to, uh, like, I'm not, I'm not your... dicked if I can't find a filter. Oh, and really. thank you for the follow. Zealous Zam? Zealous Zam. Zealous Zam. He's zealous and he's Zam. Thank you for that follow and welcome to the chat. Hope you have a good time. As, as long as he's not overzealous Zam. That guy's a dick. <laughs> no, no, it, didn't, it clearly didn't say over, so yeah. we're, we're good. This guy's cool. <laughs> overzealous Zam is like, always in your face. And fuck that guy. Anyway, so... Yeah, you, you can craft your own filters. You can craft... No, oh, on your back, actually, you have uh, the ability to craft certain things wherever you are in the world. Okay. So you can craft, like, Molotov cocktails, uh, basic equipment, uh, filters, and uh, what was the other thing you can craft in that slot? 
Anyway, basic stuff. Yep. Oh, like throwing knives. And uh, <laughs> there's lots of throwing <laughs> of knives. Of course, throwing knives. Throwing knives are so awesome in Metro every goddamn time. <laughs> uh, but in when you go to a uh, crafting table, you can actually swap out uh, the components, your your weapons, components on your, your armor. Yeah. Things like upgrades to like, uh, you can get like a, a compass or a uh, metal detector or uh, a few other things. So is he is he a little more savvy this time instead of carrying around a yes. clipboard like he did last time? No, you do still have the clipboard. Oh, okay. But it's got like the compass on it, you get the map, you flip yeah. it over, it's got your objectives on it. Okay. You know, the whole thing. But um, when, when you go to a, a table, you can actually craft ammunition as well. So you, you're... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's changing his name to Underzealous Sam. No. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. <laughs> Cheers. And Heyman, she wants to know if your metal knife has limited uses like the last of us. No. Well, as long as you can pick it up again. I was going to say, it's a yeah. throwing knife. So as long as you can retrieve oh, yeah. it, you get to use it as long as you want. I right? mean, depending on how, you know under pressure you are when you're throwing that knife some of those nasty fucking things yeah. you throw it in its face and you run the other direction and you're not getting that knife back yeah no <laughs> but i mean generally speaking you're using throwing knives on men in a situation where uh you want you're, you're in such tight quarters that even a suppressed weapon can sometimes make them go what was that you right know? yeah so uh and and believe me uh, these st these guys still do get a solid thunk when they get hit with the, the knife it's like ah and you know they that's that's good you gotta oh, feel the weight very behind satisfying those yeah <laughs> so yeah but as long as you go over and his body is in a retrievable place like most times you can pick up the knife yeah but i mean you can build more there's only really two um ingredients there are chemicals mm -hmm. and then there's like scrap so okay. scrap metal yeah and that's all you have to manage everything else is just built from those okay so it's very basic crafting and easy to to use and uh you can get different uh upgrades for your armor that will improve uh, either your ability to carry ammo or yeah. um you know, throwing knives etc etc things so is, like that is there any upgrading your person or is it just your equipment i think it's just your equipment i haven't okay. seen anything like that i, I, I didn't know if there was like no shit that you could like eat that made you stronger against radiation no, or no, made no. you have more health or something like no, that. No, nothing like that. Although you do get different filters. You have mask upgrades. Oh, okay. So that is So again, something. it's equipment though. Yes. So that's good. Yes. Uh but yeah, you could oh also when your when your mask gets fucked up and your like eye is uh you have a hole in your, your gas mask, yeah. you actually see him like if you you have a button to wipe your mask. Right. And if you do that when he has like a a, a hole and he starts gasping, yeah. you actually take a little piece of tape and over the eye mask <laughs> yes. and it's like it's like in your vision, right? That's awesome. It is awesome. So good. But then when you get to a crafting table, you can then fix your mask. Yeah. So it's not all fucked up anymore. Okay. So See, it, that's that's good. Things. That was one of the issues I had. And again, it made perfect sense for the yes. game. It was the brutal like universe of Metro and everything. It made sense in that universe. Yeah. But again, it's like with this game being bigger and more advanced and stuff like that, I like that idea that they ha you're not always constrained to yeah. finding a brand new mask if your old one's broken and no, no. finding filters and there's only like three of this, them in this area and that's it. No. Like it's It's a lot more accessible yeah. and there are a lot of guys whose corpses can be looted. So, let me awesome. tell you. Yeah. Uh, so two things. It, it is simultaneously good and bad that that's the case. Mm -hmm. I like that it is a little bit more accessible, but I, I'm only playing it on a low, low difficulty level. Yeah. So there's a lot of difficulty levels above that mm -hmm. if you really want to challenge. So if you want that experience that Correct. the other games gave you. Correct. <laughs> the other thing is it also does have a... Uh, good and bad ending or okay. a variable ending well, i mean a lot of them did right like they all the other pri previous ones both had Correct. two endings yeah. right yeah they're like morality based but in this one you have uh, a uh, a group of uh, other guys from the order which was the your uh, the spartans from the first and second game right um and depending on what you do through the course of the game some of them can die okay. due to like plot related things so if you can keep them all alive you might have the good ending but if they start dying off you you're pretty much you're probably gonna have the bad ending <laughs> not the greatest ending <laughs> so anyway in between that just for the fuck of it i fired up uh steam world heist oh, okay which i've not actually sat down and played yet and mm -hmm. goddamn is that a fun i game. hear about this all the time steam so world, tell me like, about it all those series are great but steam world dig is like a like a dig down grab things go back to the store and craft and it's like improve your equipment to dig deeper blah blah that was, kind of game it kind of it's that same idea as uh what was it moonlighter or whatever like you're kind of yeah you're constantly improving yourself so you can right. go farther into the dungeon or i guess farther into the ground for that it's, one it's kind of like a super mother load except instead of a vehicle you're just a guy yeah or a robot so steamworld heist is you are uh, a bunch of robots on 
uh, a starship and you're out there boarding starships and it's a tactical game where you have like an angle it's kind of like worms right mm -hmm. get your guy out there you have an angle you shoot you know and it takes certain damage oh so you have like trajectory for right? your shots and everything and you can bounce off walls and things okay. like that so uh but the the greatest part about it is because you guys are, are like steam powered robots and whatnot your currency is water because okay. that's the thing that like, keeps you going right so uh you have different equipment like different weapons different uh like add-ons you can get and then you have a hat so you can customize your <laughs> robots. You got, well, you got to be able to tell them apart, right? Sometimes, though, if you're in the middle of battle, it's like, do I want to shoot this guy or do I want to shoot his hat off? Because <laughs> he's got a really cool so that's, hat. That's how you earn hats. You have to shoot them off your enemy right. and then yeah. you go pick them up. I don't think it's as simple as that, but I, I've found that if I if I shoot the hat and it comes off and yep. he's like, oh, you know, <laughs> dead gum, son of a, you know, <laughs> dances around, the hat will like glow and you go, oh, yeah, pick it up and... Uh, <laughs> So yeah, uh, some of the hats are, are really shitty, but I've got some pretty awesome hats now. Sweet. Yeah, there's one that's just a a frozen brain in a cube. <laughs> I don't like know a what giant that, ice it's, cube. It's like a <laughs> brain and it's like half melted, but it's an ice cube. <laughs> I don't I guess, know. Why. I guess if they wanted to throw a bunch of hats in there, they had to get creative with some. The, of them. There are a lot of hats. Yeah. Like the, the Russian hat, you know, <laughs> like the big fur hat. Hey, hey Missy, there's awesome. additional hats available in the online store for three ninety nine per hat. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, Master it... Pierce, yeah. Like, uh, I don't know if you've played the other Metro games, LSM, but believe me, like this one is, it's different. It has a different feel to it, but I've not finished the game. I'm assuming that it's going to be more uh, surreal. Yeah. Because they, they always had that, not not supernatural, but... It's always a very strange twist at the end. You're, you're not just like, yeah. you know, in, in radiation in this subway. There's always some weird shit going on behind the there scenes. There was the ghost train. Yeah, exactly. And they like the, the various whispers and crap you hear, so I think they've moved away the, from that a little bit. The flash of light and the... <laughs> oh, the, the, dark, the dark ones, yeah. all your visions and shit. They were yeah. all psychic. Yeah. <laughs> Such a great series. Yeah, the mask wipe was useless. It was like like muddy water and wind, windscreen wipers just like smears across your fucking mask. Well, it's <laughs> better than when you've just like gutted a guy and you've got his blood all over your mask, <laughs> you know, or, or dirt's flying everywhere. You know, it smears yeah. it. You've got a little bit better vision, but in this, the only time you have to put on your mask is when you go into a radiated or a toxic area. Right, yeah. Which, depending on what the environment is, so all this big open world environment, for the most part, you can get away with taking your mask mm -hmm. off. Yeah, so like good. I said, like that's what yeah. it looked like in the trailer. So I figured, yeah, there's going to be you know irradiated areas of land and there's yes. going to be toxic sewers and right. stuff like that so that made that made sense yeah but i, I won't tell you the, the exact reason why but it's like it it kind of uh plays a little bit into the plot line of metro 2035 which i've just started to read okay which ironically is kind of telling the tale of metro last light as well oh really <laughs> which did not follow the plot of metro 2034 so there's a lot of they're weird, trying to bring them back in line yeah, there's a weird <laughs> cross pollination that's going on and i think this is the like uh, i think dimitri glukowski said that this is going to be the last one he writes but oh, okay who the hell knows but anyway, long story short, I'm enjoying it, and uh, SteamWorld Heist, I wanted to play that because they have that new SteamWorld, I think it's SteamWorld Quest that's coming out this year. Oh, I didn't even hear year. about that one. Yeah, they showed it at, um, I think it was last E3, or it would have been... It sounds like they're taking the same concept, but then like throwing into a bunch of different yeah. genres. <laughs> oh yeah, basically, it's, it's uh, just entirely different. It's kind of like Oddworld. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. do a lot of different things with, yeah. the, with the one kind of license or yeah, whatever but all their games so far and i say all of them two of them <laughs> they're all solid so sweet all right so this is of course digital fiasco live episode 58 we're going to talk about all the latest news in playstation xbox nintendo and pc gaming but first we want to talk about our picks for the triple d yep uh so triple d this week um discs oh, downloads and dlc yep yeah, uh the First one that comes up uh, was one I hadn't even heard about, but I had to go check a trailer out for because I liked the the art style of the picture. And sure. I was like, all right, I wonder what this is. Uh, so it's called War Tile, and basically what this is is by uh, Deck 13, the same guys that did the Surge games. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is really interesting because it's like a an interactive video game version of a and d board, like tabletop board game. So yep. it gives you this tiny little swatch of map with a bunch of hexes on it, and literally all your, like, little characters that you're controlling are on, like, little discs. So it's like you're playing a D&D &D game, but everything is 
uh, like fully animated when they attack and move around and everything like that. Yeah, I would watch uh, some video reviews of that one if I were you, because if I'm not mistaken on Steam, it's sitting at about a six. Oh, okay. I yeah, like obviously I always look at reviews yeah. before I get anything anyways. I was interested in it too, and I, I kind of looked at it like, oh, I haven't heard of that one. And I looked into it, and it was like, huh, <laughs> maybe, I'll, maybe I'll just hold off a bit. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's always worth a look, though. It just it looked interesting because I hadn't seen many uh, many did. games that looked like that. Sure. Um, next one up, uh, a big one for Trials fans. <clears throat> the next Trials game, Trials Rising, is coming out. Uh, this is, of course, for any, those of you that don't know what a Trials game is, it's one of those flippy dirt bike games. <laughs> flippy dirt bike games. <laughs> Which are, honestly, they're that's kind of my jam. I, I love them. They're just uh, such stupid fun. As elevator pitches go, that's been and pretty I mean, succinct. Honestly... With these ones, they just go crazier and crazier each time. Because yeah. before, they used to just make... It was like, you know, it was just a trials game. Like, you were just trying to finish the course, and that's all you do. You're racing your bike or whatever. As they went along, they actually started attaching really ridiculous storylines to a lot of these. And now they're just... There are storylines to them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like the last uh, the last two before this one and then this one are all, like, heavily story-based. So, which I, I just find ridiculous. You but killed my brother. It's, it's kind of awesome. <laughs> Plus, I mean, you unlock, like, a whole bunch of other really ridiculous bikes. I think the last sure. one, you could literally unlock a rainbow farting unicorn that you rode instead of a dirt bike. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, ridiculous fucking on-brand every single time. Uh, so, you can go check that one out if you like those games. It's going to be more of the same. Ever since Pony Island, man, I don't joke about <laughs> unicorns. Especially rainbow farting unicorns. That shit is weird. Yeah. <laughs> Pony Island. What, what, what often have they brought Pony Island to PS4? I'm actually quite surprised they haven't. Maybe it was just too weird for for. It PS4. was really <laughs> fucking weird. Like it's, it started off, why am I playing this? Yep. And then it went, holy shit, why am I playing this? Yeah, but you couldn't stop. Could it was you? <laughs> no, it was it was compelling, but it was weird, like on a level I had not expected. Yeah, exactly. All right, what else? Um. Next one up uh, is one we're both actually interested in playing. Like, are uh, you sure you ever left Pony Island? <laughs> Toe Jam and Earl, back in the yes. groove. That one's so, coming out on Friday. Way back uh, from the Genesis era. Yep. Um, he, I haven't heard any reviews on it or anything yet, so I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what that one's all about. Steven, our managing editor at PSU, actually is playing it for the review, and he'll have a, a review up shortly. But he has mentioned that they just had a uh, patch leave yesterday a day one patch uh that now has a uh, multiplayer attached to it now. oh so sweet and multiplayer was, network play it's, it's kind of uh, almost a necessity for that right. game so I mean, you don't want to be toe jam or earl you want to be no. both of them with your friend at the same well, time yeah basically um next one race up, to be the supreme funkatron this one uh Stellar uh, stellaris or stellaris 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 yes. console edition the so game tell me about this one because i know nothing about it and you seem to be super hyped about well, it well i've played it for, before for the pc and we are actually giving away a code for the ps4 version oh, of stellaris courtesy of psu <clears throat> uh, and of course uh, uh the folks at uh, paradox interactive uh stellaris is a uh, master of ryan style 4x game okay and for the first time it's now available on the like home consoles so the playstation 4 the xbox one uh, Xbox One X, yeah. S, whichever. Yeah. But yes, but it is a 4X style game and you can create your own race as well, I believe. And you build your ships, you send them out, you uh, try to make peace while you're building all your ships in the background, and then all you right. crush them under your mighty <laughs> iron fist of oh, domination. No, no, we're, we're, we're talking marketplace over here, and then everything swoops in from behind and shoots everything with lasers. <laughs> you cannot get it on mobile. No. no. There it is. Still ours, console edition. Yeah, but we're giving away a copy of that code for PS4. Uh, sometime today by the end of the show sweet all right mm. um, if you've not already had a chance to go ahead and uh, uh, sign up for that check out our website digitalfiasco.wtf slash contest and you can sign up for that in maybe Jay Tanuki Jay Jay so. could link that because I think there's a link to the it's in the, the tweet thing. if you just want to copy it over okay there yep. you go uh, next one up is one that I want to pick up. Yeah, 9 out of 10 for uh, PSU. Because it actually really has a slight bit of content that you can't get unless you actually get this edition of it. It is near Automata Game of the Yorha edition. <laughs> so, again, with the ridiculous names, of course, Yorha being the team in the game. I, I don't it. care. I fucking love this game. I want to play the DLC. It comes with extra content because it is the special edition. I need so, to buy it because it is it is one of my most favorite games of all time now. So Game of the Yorha. Though. Yep. <laughs> like that's that's just not necessary. I mean, that's they're they're having fun with it. <laughs> you know, leave the pun titles to THQ Nordic. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> they have a lock they, on that shit. They do, they do like their pun titles. So, hey, like Rutu, the... welcome to the chat. Hey, Rutu, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, brilliant marketing. Yep. G-O-T, Yorha. <laughs> God damn it. So, uh, so what's the extra it's... part? They have that, that weird DLC that's like just a string of numbers. Yeah. And they have some costumes and stuff. There's or... some extra costumes, and mm-hmm. then uh, there was... Oh, fuck, I can't even remember what it is now. There was some extra bit of content that people were, were kind of complaining about because they were like oh i own the game and i bought the dlc mm. and then there apparently there's this extra bit of content that you can't get unless you get the yorha edition i so. hear that there's also a costume where you can dress up as a, K- a, K- a kine or kane from the first game yes as well. yeah that is one of the dlc costumes it is very weird to see to be dressed up like her i mean very well, weird whatever works <laughs> it's all fan service oh anyway. it works <laughs> um, you, um up anyway. next um some more lego goodness you're getting the lego movie 2 video game so right. if you like the lego games and you like the Lego Movie, you'll probably like this one. <laughs> See, the Lego Movie 2 video game might actually uh, cause me to violate my no more, no Lego, more Lego video games. games. <laughs> uh, I, I absolutely adore that series. Yeah. Lego Movie 1 was one of probably my most favorite movies of all time, actually. It's so well done. You, well, you should and play the game with that. for all the yeah, extra that's content. The thing. That's the thing. Is I, yeah. never, I, I haven't actually played the game version of it. Yeah. So You will remember parts of the movie that didn't happen. <laughs> that's how good the game is. I mean, they got to add that content yes. to the game. So What is this? What is this? Made too many Lego movies? That's a lie. Uh, wait for a game that is a pun. <clears throat> that is a game of the pun edition. Oh, she's saying that that the contest URL says that it, it's oh, well, showing it, that it's closed. Oh, it's cl- oh, that's right. It ended at the time we started. So I can extend it for an hour. Just is, to, is while that going to take are, like two seconds or is it going to take five minutes? It'll take two seconds. You Kay. keep talking about the... the okay. I'll be right here. Um, another one, I think the... Review is either coming up or it is up at PSU uh, or it's going to come up tomorrow. Uh, it's for Dirt Rally 2.0. So if you're into um, heavy-duty, ultra-realistic rally racing games, that one is definitely for you. So a lot like the, I think, the Colin McRae ones and stuff like that. Uh, tons of fun with those ones because it's basically the Gran Turismo of rally racing. Uh, and then, oh, one that Jay Tanuki is especially excited about, Dead or Alive 6. So... <laughs> You want some uh, you want some bouncing titty fighting? Uh, it is coming out on the first. Oh, gosh. can I just pop in and talk about Up High and H-E? Yes, please. <laughs> That's what happens when you leave your seat, Jack. <laughs> I just pop in. Let me tell you about the gloriousness of Dead or Alive. It has the most convoluted story imaginable, and yes, a fighting game can have a story, even with all those bouncing jubblies waving to and fro. I mean, as we've seen with Tekken and Street Fighter and stuff, they can all have their own stories, but Dead or Alive definitely has one of the weirdest most out there fucking storylines to kind of tie like loosely tie everything together but listen those ladies <laughs> if you are a cultured individual like myself you will appreciate every single one of them oh it looks like jack's back <laughs> so jack you like dead or alive they have porn on the internet you know if you want porn just get porn no i mean honestly outside of the ridiculous boob physics in these games i i'm actually a big fan of the dead or live series because i do like the fighting in it they have um, fighting in it well yeah they fight with their boobs they slap each other with them. <laughs> okay uh but yeah dead or live six the newest one uh coming out on the first uh so you look forward to that one and brave the- women are fighting for their rights <laughs> Dead or Alive 6 Suffragette Edition, right? And the last one that's come up is also out on the 1st, and I am currently working on a review for it. It's called Awesome P, and that's P-E-A, not P-E. <laughs> I'm not sure that's better. And basically what it is is it looks like a Game Boy-style game, so it's all in the kind of like, well, pea soup green sure. to, you know, color tones. Right. Uh, but it's like a mix between a puzzle platformer and Super Meat Boy. So you're a ridiculous little you know, green pea character, and you're just running along at lightning speed, bouncing on a bunch of platforms, trying to get to the end as fast as you can. So looking forward to uh, finishing that one and, and doing full review for it. I don't know what I was expecting when I heard the title, but... Well, here, I can show you like... the picture, and no, it probably that's... sells it right there. That's, that's... <laughs> that's about right. I mean, that's exactly what yeah, I expected but, to see. But uh, being a big fan of Super Meat Boy, as soon as I saw this one, I was like, yep, yeah, I'll take on oh, that one. Oh, that explains a lot. Yeah, I like it. The graphics instantly make sense. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you know, you're a little... Little tiny character just bouncing along through sure. platforms and stuff. What is this guy's obsession with food and, you know, dinner substances? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know him. I, I don't know what it would be. So, but anyways, uh, yeah, I'll be doing the review for that Hopefully one. Hopefully it's so. good for him because Super Meat Boy was pretty awesome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you have anything else to well, add to the list there. definitely. You know how big a fan I am of racing games? Yeah. You love them. <laughs> I said, 
<laughs> you know what a big fan of racing games what, I am. What other racing game is coming out? Uh, Dirt Rally 2.0. I said coming. that one. Oh, did you? Yeah, oh, you were, you were off way. doing that shit. All right, did you say 8-Bit Invaders? No, I did not you say You were a big one. fan of Invasions, I am. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I also didn't mention that one because I wasn't the biggest fan of 8-Bit Hordes. Yeah, um, they've got a few games like that. Well, they had 8-Bit Armies, yep. then they had 8-Bit Hordes, sure. now they have 8-Bit Invaders. Now, the cool part, I will give it to them on this. Yep. Again, they're trying to make a, a simplified RTS that you can play on the console, which they, you know, they did. It's not my favorite, but there's a lot of people out there that like it, clearly, because they keep making these games. The best part about it, though, is that all of them are cross-platform, and you mm. can play with all of the previous armies and invaders and uh, horde all together. Interesting. So you can, as far as I know, anyways, that's what the previous game, the one that I reviewed. Sure. You could literally play orcs versus armies if you wanted to. You have to unlock them, but they're there. So I'd imagine invaders, so you can play aliens versus armies or future tech versus you know the medieval humans or whatever like any mix you wanted to do i hate to beat the drum again but it'd be interesting if they had different genres for each game so that you have like aliens versus the army on a cooking show or something <laughs> like that would be a more interesting mashup save that for steal this idea then. <laughs> okay. all right into, off to the news into the news into the news uh, so, uh, there's been a lot of corporate shuffling. A lot some, of shuffling some, behind some, the scenes? Yeah, some major uh, players in the industry have moved uh, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, first of all, being uh, Sony Corporation and Sony Interactive Entertainment, uh, Deputy President Jim Ryan is going to be uh, actually promoted to be President and CEO of SIE, which is Sony Interactive Entertainment, effective April the 1st. Uh, the current president, John Codero, will be uh, moving over to enhancing their network leading into PlayStation 5 because that's yeah. their big focus about improving PSN. So. Of course. Uh, Jim Ryan, you probably have seen in a number of different uh, Euro European-based things, but he's now going to be the is overall that, president. Is that the Tom Clancy guy? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Tom Clancy, no, kind of. No, Jack Ryan. <laughs> no, no. Jim Ryan, he, he looks more like Tom Clancy so much as a character written oh, by Tom Clancy. All right, then. <laughs> he is not going to be snapping any necks anytime soon. Although that would be an interesting game because he looks kind of like your average uh, grandpa kind of person, you know, in a suit. Grandpa choking and, and snapping necks. <laughs> yeah. Basically, it's like uh, uh, retirement home agent 13 kind of thing, you know. Uh, oh, 17. It's been a while since I played Hitman. I don't know. Anyway. So, uh, he is retiring, uh, pardon me, he's moving on to the, the present, and uh, uh, Kodera is moving on to this network department. Um, also, of course, uh, Reggie Filzami is re he's leaving Nintendo it's, after 15 years. My, my Twitter was ablaze yeah. for the past, like, you know, few days with yes. just nothing but Reggie memes and saying his their farewells and all that oh, kind of stuff. He, he has so many memes. Uh, like, I mean, my body is ready. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 what was it? Not my problem. Like, well, I mean, he's like the, the PSP people. One? All right, the Reginator. Like, calm down. Like I get it. You like him. Yep. He, you know he he's leaving or whatever. That's fine. But people were acting like he fucking died or something like that. Like they were like you know saying they were crying and they were like oh my god this is terrible. Well, so sorry to see him go and like all this other stuff. It's like that he, he's still alive. All right, just calm down. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. But you think about Jackie T when Jack Tretton left Sony. He went away for a while, and he showed up at Scientific Revenue. He may as well have died, because that is not the Jackie T I know. Oh, he's just whoring himself out. He <laughs> is very much so. Like, it is it is just sleazy. Um, and yeah, Jesus. and then, of course, the other side of the memes was Reggie being replaced by Bowser Which at is, Nintendo. <laughs> I gotta say... I think, I think they hired him. Yeah, be, they hired Bowser because of his fucking name. I, I'm thinking that guy changed his name before he went to work for Nintendo, and he's been promoted on the strength of his name ever since. I mean, he he probably walked in there, and the fancy suit he had handed them a piece of paper that said, "My name is Bowser," and they probably hired him on the fucking spot because of it. Actually, I hear he kidnapped the princess and <laughs> wouldn't give it back till he gave him a job. That was the deal. It was a hostage negotiation. Well, that's aggressive for a for a first interview. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's how you get attention. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Uh, so he is uh, moving on as of April the 15th. So that's crazy. I, I don't know who this uh, uh, Bowser guy is. Well, the only, thing I, the only thing I've heard, Doug which Bowser is, which is kind of, um, it, it makes it kind of shysty. I hope he doesn't follow through with, with, you know, some old practice and stuff. He used to work for EA. So, well, a I, lot of people used to work for EA. For years, though. And with EA's practices, I yep. really hope he doesn't try to bring some of those over. <laughs> well... Because I'm happy with Nintendo, because, yeah. again, they're off doing their own thing. 
the last thing I need is is you know a console company now to bring in EA's practices of let's monetize everything. No, see, Nintendo does that enough already. They don't need to do it more. <laughs> the difference is that you know working for EA is one thing, but when you're working for Nintendo of America. You are there to be the voice of Nintendo on Earth, where you know the mighty corporation in Japan dictates onto them how it shall be, yeah. and they enact it or else. So yeah, I, I, I wouldn't worry about that too mm -hmm. much. But yeah, it's uh, I think honestly he just got the job because his name was Bob. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's talk about some churn. Last couple of weeks there have been uh, we were talking about. Three weeks ago, I believe, about the possibility of unionization and whatnot because of, you know, constantly studios yep. downsize and, and they move from place it's, to place. and It's the same old, same right. old. Every single time a big AAA game is done, all of a right. sudden the, the market is just flooded with a bunch of people that just got laid off. And that's exactly what happened over the last two weeks. Yeah. So some major layoffs and movements happened and, and in the most like really scummy of circumstances, <laughs> like just greasy as uh, as bubbles would say so uh two weeks ago activision blizzard they cut roughly 800 of their staff and uh to go with some of the, the memes out there to put in terms they can understand they got loot boxes with an 8.3 percent chance of containing a pink slime yeah <laughs> uh and, and but the the thing that's great about it, it was announced like in around their financial results calls mm -hmm. and bobby kotick came out with the following phrase that i Literally, I just wanted to throw up in my mouth a little bit. He says, while our financial results for 2018 were the best in our history, yep. we didn't realize our full potential. So we're cutting a bunch of fucking guys. Yep. That last part I paraphrased. But <laughs> like literally their best financial results in their history, and that's not good enough. It's it's big business. I've personally been a part of it before too, like laid off and everything. It's Ridiculous. like, hey, guess what? We're doing awesome this year. We made $50 million dollars. Fuck you. See you later. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That's how that works. And to continue to make more money, we're going to replace you with a robot. Yeah. Robots are too expensive. We're going to replace <laughs> you with a, someone from overseas. Okay. Uh, so uh, I guess to translate this, they forecasted Overwatch making more money than they thought, and PUBG and Fortnite ate their lunch for the year. So fuck you, everyone. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, oh, yes. And then, of course, Hate Machine points out at the stuff that we've been pointing out. <laughs> CEO Cheryl will get their $1 million bonus oh, yes. every year, though. <laughs> no, no, I'll get to that. That's the next thing. Oh, okay, there uh, you go. <laughs> Guild Wars 2 studio, Arianet, followed suit. They laid off uh, significant uh, significant cost-cutting measures. They laid off um, an, an in unspecific amount. Mm -hmm. They didn't say, but apparently the rumors are that it's a, a significant number of people in the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, and then EA... Uh, just late last week, they started uh, a massive layoff at their Melbourne studio, uh, uh, which is apparently exclusive to mobile development. Oh, okay. So I guess they're the ones that came up with uh, Command & Conquer Rivals. <laughs> so I feel a little bit less bad, but... Uh, and, and, you know, Sims, mobile, and a bunch of other things. But yeah. uh, here's the thing. They're the largest mobile game developer in the country. So 200-something people are being laid off. The layoff, uh, pardon me, uh, that's the, the size of their studio. About mm -hmm. one quarter of that is being laid off. And the Australian chapter of Game Workers Unite said the, the job losses were equivalent to nearly 10% of the entire Australian game development Oof, industry. Brutal. So, I mean, it's a close-knit environment but still that's a huge chunk of yeah. people to be out there looking for jobs exactly yeah and damon blade yeah bungie saw the writing on the wall they got right. the fuck out when they could <laughs> well i mean how much of that i wonder is because activision was in a position where they wanted to cut costs and the best way to do that was to uh like and, and starbreeze we're going to talk about that later they did a similar thing uh activision blizzard said okay you want this publishing deal back, mm -hmm. we'll let you buy us out and you can have the IP and go. And yeah. And then they, they get a cash flow influx and they, they're not responsible for publishing yeah. X number of things. And then, you know It's a it's a non cost to them after the right. fact. They just they they run away with their chunk of money and that's one last team they have to worry about. Especially considering Destiny like year over year was not doing as good. I'm just, again, I think we'd mentioned this before, but I'm interested to see what kind of happens now that they yeah. are on their own, if they're going to change things, turn things around, because they don't have Activision Blizzard above their head trying to poke and prod their game to get it to do certain things. Yeah. Now Bungie can kind of do their own thing with it and I see don't if they think can they're gonna do have something trouble. Different. I don't think they're going to have trouble uh, attracting investors. Yeah. One of the things I really like that, that kind of came out of this is that 
um, a lot of uh, other companies really came out of the woodwork after a lot of these layoffs happened because my Twitter feed like blew up with a lot of these companies saying, oh, hey, guess what? You were at Activision? We're hiring right now. Or, hey, yeah. bring all that talent this way. So there's a lot of companies out there that really spread the love and they were just like hey come on over here we're hiring or we need more people like you yeah. so you see that all the time whenever you have a major layoffs all the studios go out to twitter to you know the various social media feeds mm -hmm. and advertise yes we need people uh and unfortunately it's just passing from one to the other half yeah. the time but uh what was it uh heat machine says uh, i wish bungie would take halo back yeah that uh, won't I'll, happen <laughs> I'll, I'll see that and i'll raise you one i wish bungie would go back and start making the myth games again which was their they had uh a army-based strategy like a unit-based strategy game where you had to manage a fixed army and take certain objectives over the course of a storyline in the game and that was pre-halo that's way back in the day those are really good games so like, halo wars no, they were just <laughs> just called Myth. I don't remember what the second one was called. I think it was just Myth 2. Pretty sure there was just the two of them. Anywho, um, so here's the thing. There is a non-profit company called As You Sow. Okay. Uh, so shall you reap is the, the phrase. But a non-profit foundation, their mission is to provide a, a corporate social responsibility oversight. So what they do... They do an annual analysis. They put this out, uh, how much chief execs make, uh, and they calculate how much they're overpaid Okay. based on a certain metric. All right. I was going to say, how do they choose how much they're overpaid? It, it, <laughs> it takes into account their salary, the mm -hmm. ratio between uh, that and the average worker at their firm, mm -hmm. uh, plus factors like shareholder, shareholder votes against the CEO's pay package and told, uh, total shareholder return. So uh, they applied this analysis to the entire industry and they found two things uh two of the most overpaid ceos out there wait uh, wait wait ea and activision shockingly enough <laughs> first of course bobby kotick yeah like the worst offender of them all uh, he is the most overpaid ceo in u.s history according to as you so his salary was reported at 28 million dollars 28 million six hundred ninety eight thousand three hundred seventy five dollars which is 306 times the average Activision staff member. Jesus Christ. Yeah, and 92% of shareholder votes against his package. Uh, apparently, that is, a, a, according to their calculations, an excess payment of about $12,800,000. That's how much more he's being paid than he's actually worth. Yeah, I Meanwhile, don't know. I just, I, I don't get it. I just, it makes it, no it, fucking sense to the, me. The rich get richer. It's all about the 1%. Uh, so, Oh, Hitman she wants to know if that includes his bonuses. Uh, I'm sure that that does, because I don't think his raw salary is I was going to say, I don't think he's getting paid $20 no. million and then like $15 million on top of it as he no. ships the game or whatever. But I still, think... it's a gratuitous amount of money it's for a one person yep. for for you know a, comp a video game company. Especially when they're talking about, oh, we didn't meet our targets, and exactly. now we're going to lay off 800 people. How about... Uh... How about you just take home, I don't know, $8 million, and then you give the $20 million back to all the employees you fucking laid off or something like that. Like, it's, oh, it's mind-boggling. Yep. Meanwhile... Yes, uh, machine, it is egregious. It is, it <laughs> is egregious. Uh, mark that on your bingo card. Uh, EA CEO Andrew Wilson, he uh, was paid roughly in excess of $19 million, according to this calculation. Yeah. His salary with bonuses is $35,728,000. <sighs> Which, uh, and again, they had 97% of shareholder votes against the package. It stands at 371 times the average EA employee's pay. So the average uh, CEO to worker at most Fortune 500 companies, yep. the largest 500 companies in the U.S., the, the worst ratio is 142 to 1. These guys are like 100, uh, 307 and th uh, 371 times the average worker. So that's ridiculous. Yeah. So, I mean, it, they cannot be just coming in and pushing all of these guys to do crunch time and then laying them off and then walking away with 30 million dollars that's yeah, insane it's 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 just straight up disgusting it like is. how it's one of those things that just boggles my mind if you take if you take home fucking six million dollars a year yeah. you can't even spend that much fucking money unless you're like snorting coke off hookers every single day of the fucking year and even then it i didn't be... realize that was off the table <laughs> i was about to say i could do it but no it's like but just like unless you're you're just blowing your money mm. on like gold-plated yachts and stuff like that 
You're getting that year after year after year. What the fuck are you doing with $28 million? Like, yep. what the hell do you even do with that much money? It'd be even better if, you know, just tomorrow Bobby Kotick has a heart attack and dies, and he's like, wow, good thing I worked so hard. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and sure laid he... off all those people. I'm sure he feels great about that. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. All right, so uh, let's talk about something that has nothing to do with something so scummy. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, and uh, this is kind of funny. Because we're going to talk about Anthem a little bit. And oh, I mean, it's it's kind of there now. It's it is out there. in the wild. So. But uh, first thing we're going to talk about is EA and Bioware, they've partnered with District 9 director Neil Blomkamp to create Conviction, right. a short movie. Yeah. And if you actually watch, you can go out to uh, Oats Studios YouTube channel. You can see it's like a three 345 uh, short film. And it actually has some really goddamn impressive graphics. Mm -hmm. It makes me think that Anthem would make a better movie than video <laughs> game. They might have even done that in the conceptual stage of, like, know. hey, let's make this so it is viable as, you know, entertainment, whether it be TV show, right. movie, Netflix, whatever. Yeah, I, well, whatever it is, it hasn't got its legs yet. I, I don't count them out <laughs> yet, but... <laughs> so Sam says he spent $9 million a year on socks and underpants. He doesn't do laundry. <laughs> Are you buying, like, Louis Vuitton and Gucci every day? No, it's just he's got... He gets them by the box, and they <laughs> pop up like Kleenex. <laughs> you know, just, yeah, just rip them all out. <laughs> yep. I tell you. So anyway, uh, and, and the title of this piece is uh, Blonde Cap's Conviction Fails, a, uh, fails Appeal Attempt, because <laughs> Anthem is, of course, not doing great. Uh, actually, what makes me think is that I would really like to see them partner with uh, Blonde Camp on actually doing a Mass Effect movie. Oh, he would fucking kill it. Something Definitely. like, like that. Like what he did, like with Anthem, I wasn't interested in Anthem really in concept. Like it had Iron Man suits and flying around. So yeah, like I eh. like the combat and the design of the suits, sure. but anything outside of that, I really didn't give a shit about the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, that said, I did see. I think it was watching uh, No Beard watching him fly around in Anthem, and uh, he had something that looked like a fucking airsoft gun. Oh, of course. And it was yeah. like, he's like, the, the huge monster suit that he's trucking around, and yeah. it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, doesn't do any damage. He doesn't know what the hell's going on. Anyway, so yeah, people are responding to Anthem uh, right now, <laughs> and I can't I think, believe... I think they're responding with their wallets, right? Well, from that what too. I've heard. <laughs> but get this, though. Yeah. Uh, the game is scored right now. It's sitting at 61 on PC on Metacritic. Mm-hmm. On uh, Xbox and PS4, hasn't even been reviewed enough times to get a score. Oh, that's brutal. Right? And it's been out since, I believe, Friday. Yeah. And then it had the pre-release before that, even, where people like, you know, get it early. Yeah. And for, then, for, you know, like, for, before for, you find out how bad. For a game that was basically toted as, like, hype train of the year. Right. To not even acquire a rating yet on there over like a huge like weekend of play and stuff like that that's that's insane i can't believe it hasn't gotten anything yet you know what else is kind of funny their day one patch mm -hmm. broke hdr for xbox and playstation Ooh, users that sucks <laughs> so <laughs> gotta it's love like, those day one patches that that fucking break your game so you can't even right. enjoy it <laughs> so i mean you think back to destiny right I, I destiny got a little bit of a pass because it was the first mainstream games of service game that was all it was like you had grand theft auto online which is like you can always go back to the single player yeah yeah but this is it's all it is that's mm -hmm. the the whole you can't package. log in you can't play right. the game basically and then people over time kind of soured on that and destiny 2 had a little bit better reaction but still sold a lot less and now we're going to anthem and people are like ah, wait a minute <laughs> this place seems pretty empty to me yeah so I don't know. It's not scoring well. I'm I'm assuming it's going to get turned around because it's Bioware, but we'll see. I mean, ju just like we've seen with Destiny, it's it's probably one of those ones, especially because it's EA's first take at this one too. Right. Um, it's going to be one of those games that they're you know they've kind of put it out there. They're going to get all that feedback and they're going to figure out stuff kind of along the way of like how to correct it, what to update, what to, you know, do those little tweaks and changes to mm -hmm. like some of the UI, how some of the stuff handles and everything. And that you'll see that rating go up over time. Uh, but right. as it sits right now, obviously the first <laughs> yeah. the first swing is is not doing well. <laughs> you know what probably would have improved their chances if they delayed apex for a month <laughs> yeah and that we were kind of talking about that before is that like they they put out this game that's just fucking like killing in in that realm right, right now and everyone else is looking at anthem now they're like wait a minute i just want to play this and it's free <laughs> so why they're eating you? their own lunch exactly <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah so I, I, I don't think that that metaphor works in that circumstance because, like, I'm eating my own lunch. Well, that's what I'm supposed to do. But, but yeah. it's like I know what you mean. Yeah, they put out a game that they're not yeah. going to make nearly as much money on, and people are enjoying it more than they're enjoying the game that right? they spent fucking six years building or whatever. Right. So while we're on the topic of video game adaptations, mm -hmm. uh, Ubisoft is once again getting into uh, the realm of adaptations because okay. they, of course, they own that movie studio. Right? Of course, yeah. So it always makes sense. They did um, what did they do? They they did uh, the, I think the first one was the original Assassin's Creed two short films they did before the release of the game. Yeah. And they did uh, they did something for the division. They did something. Oh, Far Cry. They did it with Greg Burke. Yes, that's that right. That whole intro thing that was on Amazon Prime. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. So now they're actually doing <laughs> two major projects. They have a division movie going, like a full movie. A full movie. Okay, that could movie. be interesting. It is starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Jessica Chastain. They could do better than Jake Gyllenhaal. I don't but... know about that. You know, did you ever see uh, what was Just... it? Um, Jake Gyllenhaal just what was for the, the most part he only plays Jake Gyllenhaal. No, 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 no. He actually is like a pretty. He's not like uh, like a, a Gary Oldman kind of <laughs> chameleon, but he he can get into some really distinct roles. What was the role where Jake Gyllenhaal was the soldier in in uh, the Middle East? Uh oh, the brothers one where it no was, it, no wasn't it? Yeah, there was one where he came home and his he no he had one. like a fight with Jarhead. his brother and so Jarhead. oh That's there it. you go that's yeah. exactly right thanks Jay Spring. That was his early stuff too. Like that yeah. was, yeah, yeah. But you, you look at Jarhead compared to like uh, Nightcrawler and say, eh. yeah. or uh, what's that? Um, the other Dunning video game Darko? one? No, no, no. The video game one. Uh, the uh, the Sands of Time. Um, oh, Prince of Persia. Prince of Persia. I never did see the live it, it action was Prince of Persia. Terrible. <laughs> Don't even bother. <laughs> Ironically, the video game adaptation of the Prince of Persia movie was actually really good. Yeah. The movie, not so much. Anyway. <laughs> but what they're also doing now is a brand new series. It is a TV adaptation. It's being brought by Atlas Entertainment, which are the guys that did the 12 Monkeys TV series. Oh, okay. And they are actually putting together... Oh, oh hello. Heartland Media. Thank, thank you for the follow. Thank you very much for that follow. Welcome to the stream. We should probably throw our Chirons up here so they know yeah, who the hell go. we are. <laughs> so anyway, what they're doing is the uh, the guys that did 12 Monkeys, which yeah. is a great series, um, no matter what sci-fi said. <laughs> yeah, well, Jerks. it's sci-fi, so Jerks. whatever. doesn't matter. It's on Amazon Prime. You can watch it. Uh, they are doing a Skull and Bones TV series. Oh, really? <laughs> right. So prior to the game coming out, it's going to be like Black Sails, essentially. Right, right. And I would love to see another pirate show. Black Sails was amazing. If it's anywhere like that, you know, that has the kind of 12 Monkeys sort of frenetic action to it, that would yeah. be great. Well, I mean, that's uh, Black Sails was basically Game of Thrones with pirates, right? Like, that was more or less what they were going for. I, I wouldn't say that, but it, it, People it was, could fucking die. It was high drama and, yeah. and, you know, a lot of shit going on all the time. That was kind of the 1600s. I mean... <laughs> It was all about, uh, I yeah. don't remember the name of the island, but it was like about the, the incoming British Navy and pushing back pirates, the end of the Age And Hate Machine, that's that's literally what I was thinking. Sci-Fi canceled the Expanse, so fuck them. <laughs> yeah, so again, thank you, Amazon, for, uh, we'll see uh, uh, the Expanse Season 4 sometime in the next couple of months, probably. So anyway, uh, it is uh, being adapted for um, television for the company director, um, Danielle Krennic was the he's going to executive produce the show, as well as the head of Ubisoft Film and Television, Jason Altman. So uh, they're going to make this into a full TV series, and uh, it is apparently uh, also attached to it. They have uh, Amanda Siegel, who executive produced the uh, television adaptation of The Mist, okay, which wasn't terrible actually. I saw it on Netflix, and uh, Atlas is Andy Horowitz and Richard Suckle will executive produce. Robert Amadon will help Shepard for Atlas. And uh, David Leach is, uh, is the guy attached to the Division movie. So okay. that is apparently already in production. Well, I'm definitely on board with a Division movie because I yeah. like that whole world. It's not exactly my type of game, per well, se. Because it's, like, it's a game-as-a-service game. It's, yeah, it's game-as-a-service. But Again. honestly, it's uh, I, I dig the style and that storyline and oh, everything. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm totally down for a movie. I was super interested when I thought it was a game like Wildlands. And it can't be any worse than the Assassin's Creed movie, right? <laughs> Right? <laughs> he said last wordsingly. <laughs> well, and that's canon. Yeah. They actually made it canon. Why, so Ubisoft? So unfortunate. Why? I mean, they're Ubisoft. They could literally just go in and say, no, it's no longer canon. Don't worry about it. <laughs> just, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, just today, very, very early today, uh, developer Virtual Basement. Uh, announced a new game coming in March called Outlaws of the Old West. These are one of the developers of Ark, 
that series. Okay. Uh, and it is very one much... One of the developers? Was yes. it like a group of developers that made that game? I, I don't know. Like, uh, or is it like someone from that team went on and made their own like virtual basement whatever. I have a feeling the original developers were like uh, as I recall it was being done by like two guys okay. and like as their team grew and whatnot had other people involved in it I don't know specifically what the arrangement is but they okay. are one of the developers uh, maybe they did one of the ports I don't know you can look it up it's online <laughs> anyway but it is a classic western game but it is a survival game so it's like the old west except it's like Red Dead Redemption except no towns. Right. You go out. You go out in your covered it's, wagon. It's literally the Wild West. There's yep. like nothing there. You're just you surviving get, off the land. You, you get dysentery. You know, <laughs> and that's it. And you build your shit. You uh, craft stuff. And it is a player-based economy. So much like Ark, it is designed for PvP technically. Mm -hmm. But uh, if it's anything like Ark was... You'll run a private server and not right? worry about the assholes that want to take all your shit. And just build a <laughs> bunch of stuff. Yeah. So all I have to worry about now is fucking cougars. <laughs> Which is funny. They know what they're doing because the trailer literally has a cougar in it. Because they know. <laughs> yep. They fucking Horrifying. know. Horrifying. <laughs> I still have... And Damon Blade, it's not an ARC mod. This is literally a whole different game. Like oh, I think he's being facetious. Okay, well, I don't know. I, they like... don't have a facetious emote for no, it. That's so. <laughs> oh, I, I can hear it. I, 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 my sixth sense. <laughs> But, uh, no, it's like that other one they have. I think it's called, is it called Atlas or something? It's that other... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like a pirate w uh, one or whatever, right? I don't know. It, it's basically the same kind of arkish yeah. thing. It's arc with pirates, I think. Yes. So Whereas this they're, is... They're going out into the different genres. Yeah. So now, okay... So the one way you're going to get me to play Ark yes. is you're going to have the spacefaring, like, oh, sci-fi yeah. spaceships and laser guns and stuff yeah. like that. That's when I'm going to play the Ark game. So, like, know, game. Space <laughs> Engineers, but with more of a, a blasty mm, kind of way. Yeah, yeah. Like, Space Engineers was very much, hey, yeah. build this cool stuff, but then there's not a lot else to do in right. the game. So you really you're looking at kind of an X Beyond the Frontier sort of game, <laughs> except with more freeform building. Yeah, like I, I want to be able to build my own my own ship and my sure. own station and stuff like that, and Why build not? some weapons and stuff. But yeah, give me I don't know maybe a little bit of lore behind it. That would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, RFL Atlas had a secret menu option that opened the arc menu. <laughs> it was one option below quit. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't really uh, do a really good job of skinning that uh, that yeah. engine. So yeah. Interesting, but this uh, Red Dead Ark Redemption, as I'm calling it, will be uh, apparently it's coming out early access on Steam March the 12th, and it is actually planned for full release on PS4, Xbox One, and PC I mean, sometime that, in the future. That's the way they're going. I mean, Ark yep. hit it big on on PS4 and Xbox and stuff like that. So why not, you know, bring I mean, bring the Wild West yeah. there too? I with that how game... with how popular Red Dead was. Oh sure. It has. They know that the fans are there now. There's people that will buy into a Western survival. Oh, I can't wait to just watch discount Twitch. Yeah, because it's like I want to play Ark, but I don't like Western. <laughs> you know? and, yeah, and Hate Machine says it'll be in early access <laughs> for ten years. <laughs> you never know, right? These days, like if they want to get it out for the existing platforms, yeah, uh, they're gonna need to pull the pin soon. I mean, guaranteed, they they've learned a lot from Ark because that was in early access for a long fucking yeah. time. But they really brought it together at the end. So oh, yeah. They, they, I, they now that they know what content. they're doing and they have a team under them now, so yeah, they'll. It won't be ten years for this one. <laughs> no, no. But yeah, they they supported Ark. They added a bunch of shit, like a shitload of extra. Content oh yeah, for there's free tons extra. Plus there's mod support, so total yeah. that. So anyway, all right. We mentioned Star Breeze before, mm -hmm. and uh, of course we know that they're pretty on the brink themselves. Yeah. financially, they haven't been doing great. <laughs> They're not giving their CEO $38 million either. I don't think they're worth $38 million right now. No. So uh, because they're in uh, having issues, they actually sold back the publishing rights for System Shock 3. Oh, okay. So to the company that is developing it, they, they, uh, they acquired the rights. They are now selling them back so that company can go publish it elsewhere if they want or self-publish or whatever. But they're returning the rights published, to the game. That's all that matters. Oh, yeah. No. I mean, Warren Spector was attached to it in an advisory role. They are like, mostly done from what I heard. Not completely done, but anyway, um, because they've been having such financial trouble, they sold their financial rights or their, their publishing rights rather to System Shock 3. Um, another thing, Overkill's Walking Dead game yep. that's being like shellacked on PC. Mm -hmm. It was delayed last month for PS4 and for Xbox One, and the rumor is now that it is being canned. Ooh. Yeah, uh, and it's not so much a rumor. Apparently, uh, PlayStation users who had pre-booked the game yeah they're getting letters from sony that says you know the publisher has canceled this game right here's your pre-book back oh, okay 
So, uh, it, and there's no official announcement yet, but that's as close to an official announcement as you're going to get, probably. I mean, yeah, if they're like, because that's money in the bank. Yeah. So if they're going ahead and just refunding all that, it's not happening. Yeah, they're not going to they're not going to spook their investors though yeah. with an official announcement anytime soon until they can figure out a plan. But just like before, they're still talking about concentrating on their most lucrative brand, which is of course Payday. Of course. Yeah. And if I don't get a fucking Payday three soon. <laughs> Like what? If, okay, so what if Starbreeze went under, but they sold their license, and then someone else picked up Payday? Is like, there is there like a yeah, like, is there a dev that you would want to handle Payday? It really doesn't matter because Overkill is the developer, and Starbreeze basically just bought them. Oh, okay. So they if they wanted to sell uh, Overkill, they could do that and just you know go someplace else. But yeah, it doesn't really matter as long yeah. as it's not some like EA where they're gonna you know monetize the shit out of it. Because <laughs> well, yeah, you'd always have to worry about that. Yeah. But anyway, uh, apparently their Walking Dead game wasn't great, so who the hell knows if <laughs> I mean, Overkill could make a shitty game just as easily. Yeah, I don't know. that's true. I would just like a situation where they turn out like the IO Interactive guys, where you know they take Hitman, they go and make Hitman. Right. Just go and do that's Payday. That's what they do. They specialize in that right? one game. Yeah. If Starbreeze could sell them off, I'd relax a little bit. <laughs> but here's the other thing that a lot of people have forgotten about. Starbreeze still owns the publishing rights to Double Fine's Psychonauts 2. Right. Which... I haven't heard hide nor hair of mm -hmm. in years. You better believe with all the hype and the fandom and all the work that's gone into that, yeah. it's not going to go under. It's someone gonna canceled, someone no. is going to get that, and they're going to carry on with yeah. it somewhere. Like, well, look what happened with Tim Schafer, right, with uh, with Brutal Legend, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. that used to be an Activision game, mm -hmm. and they took it over to EA when they, they uh, we're not going to publish it anymore. Yep. And then Activision tried to fucking sue EA. <laughs> so I was like... You know, should have yeah, put a ring on it. Exactly. That's what Tim Shaver said. He said it on Twitter, you know? So, I don't know. And that was such a great game. It was. It, it was. really was. I was actually watching a YouTube video the other day, and it, it reminded me that Tim Tim Schafer officially said, he said, after he's done Psychonauts 2, Brutal Legend 2 is the next project he's uh, working on. So I really hope that's true. No, because it, it, was, it, was it was a passion project for him. He didn't make it because it was what fans wanted. It, right. He was making it because it's what he wanted to do. Uh, so such a good game. Psychonauts 2 is kind of for the fans. Yeah. Brutal Legend 2 is for Tim Schafer. <laughs> hey, you know what? If he can do it like Psychonauts 2 and they have like a fig or a Kickstarter oh, or something. Oh, they'll, they'll definitely know? do it. Uh, Tim Schafer loves Kickstarter. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mentioned he likes fig more because it, they or take wait, less of a... Yeah, whatever whatever works for yeah. him. But yeah, basically, I'm, of course, I'm looking forward to that. Because yes, Brutal Legend was a fucking phenomenal game. I loved it. Definitely. That is a hidden gem if ever I heard one. All right, so last weekend, just before Microsoft's presentation at Mobile World Congress, a group of employees got together and they put together a group letter to Microsoft executives uh, saying that they are protesting their participation in the augmented reality contract they have with the U.S. Army. Okay. So this is the $480 million contract that Microsoft has to provide the U.S. Army with hollow lenses and de uh, develop this, ver uh, was it, was it? Visual Augmentation System, mm -hmm. or Integrated Visual Augmentation System, IVAS. So that was in November of last year they won that contract. So they're supposed to uh, ship them 100,000 of these HoloLenses. I think they're the one and only people that actually have them out there. Yeah, probably. So uh, here's the, get, get this, this is the, this is the list of things it's supposed to do. So Microsoft's mixed reality glasses uh, are supposed to provide soldiers with thermal imaging, night vision, vitals monitoring, and HUD. I don't know if, like, Peter Molyneux wrote that list of things or <laughs> or what, but uh, I have difficulty believing that it's going to do, like, thermal imaging and shit. But. No, no, because if it was Peter Molyneux, he would also say it would project a, a virtual friend that's a 12-year-old boy that you can talk to while you're lonely on the battlefield or something. No, if you <laughs> if you start seeing 12-year-old boys in the battlefield, it's probably just your, you know, you know shell shock. Shell shocked, yeah. <laughs> you know, ah, save me! <laughs> you know, teddy bear explodes. It just and, starts you know, melting in front of you. Right. Just a little bit of post-traumatic stress <laughs> for your trouble. So, uh, the contract's stated objective, and this I want you to, to listen how, how bizarre this sounds, to rapidly develop, test, and manufacture a single platform that soldiers can use to fight, rehearse, and train that provides increased lethality, mobility, and situational awareness necessary to, uh, to achieve overmatch against our current and future adversaries. It's a whole lot of bullshit force multiplier garbage. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Microsoft workers write, uh, we do not sign up to develop weapons. We demand a say in how our work is used. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? I... You're selling your shit to the American military. Yep. 
As if you're going to have any say well, in no, how it's used. This, this is what the, the Microsoft employees are saying to Microsoft. Microsoft turned around and said oh, back to okay. them. No, but here's the thing. Yeah. Like, uh, they had about the same reaction as you did yeah. to their own employees. Uh, we gave this issue careful consideration. <laughs> here's a check. Oh, okay. We considered it. Yeah. Carry on. <laughs> and outlined our, our perspective in an October 2018 blog. We always appreciate feedback from employees and provide many avenues for their voices to be heard. In fact, we heard from many employees throughout the fall. And as we said then, we're committed to providing our technology to the U.S. Department of Defense, which includes the U.S. Army, under this contract. As we've also said, we'll remain engaged as an active corporate citizen in addressing the important ethic, ethical and public policy issues related to the AI and the military, which is a great big fuck you. We've got the money. Yep. That was that's literally it. It's like, hey, yep. we hear what you're saying. Shut up. <laughs> we'll give that the consideration it deserves. Yeah. And uh, I'm just going to go cash this check now for yeah. like four hundred eighty million dollars. <laughs> so timing being a little bit questionable, uh, Microsoft announced the whole lens two on the weekend, uh, which is supposed to be uh, marketed towards both uh, platform developers and to home users. And Microsoft doesn't know how the fuck to market this thing because they were talking about all the applications they could use in a business. And then they brought out the guy from Fortnite and they're talking about like in a game. I'm like, yeah. So it doubles the frame of vision uh, without decreasing the resolution of the game or like the games. Uh, eye track is included in an iris scanning. So now they can log you in just by scanning your iris. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't concern <laughs> one, me one, at one all. One step closer, man. <laughs> sure. We're, we're like very soon. It's just going to be iris tracking as you get on the bus like Minority Report. Uh, it has articulated hand tracking that lets you interact with virtual items as if they were real. That is kind of neat. Uh, improve microphones, imp improve comfort based on, and this is the one, it sounded like a great idea, and the more I started to think about it, the more I got kind of a Joseph Mengele feel <laughs> from it. Uh, they improved comfort based on scanning the heads of thousands of people from different races and ethnicities yeah. to get tolerances for the perfect fit. Okay. So they're scanning people of different races to measure their head shapes. Isn't that what the Nazis did? Uh, you know what? There, there's nothing. There's nothing bad behind that, though. They're not oh, sizing no. people up to make sure that they can like kill them or something like that. No, like, I'm sure that that you know they're that going for the best shape generic and... fit, and then you know, sure, that's fine. Anything that makes a fucking headset more comfortable, unless they're unless they're like you know you accept payment as soon as you open your eye and it scans your eye and then it you know we own you now. Like unless it does that shit, yeah, I have no problem with that because. If it's one thing you need when you have a VR headset, augmented reality, whatever, if it's not comfortable, fuck that yeah. thing. Yeah, no, it's true. If you can't wear it for more than like 20 minutes without getting like a headache or a sore sore skull or whatever, like it's yeah. not worth it. Well, the, the two things that say you're not going to have to worry about it. First of all, it's a mix of plastic and uh, carbon fiber. So it is very light. Oh, okay. So the other thing sounds is... Expensive. The other thing <laughs> is it's $3,500. Yeah, that sounds about right. But they are nice enough to offer you monthly payments of $125. Oh, of course. Yeah. Because yeah. they want you to buy in. Because right. apparently the American military isn't putting enough money into it already. They want customers to put into it, too. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll wait until the American uh, military has like put in enough money that they have this thing down to a fucking science and they can sell it to me for three hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, but even still, like how how many uh, applications did you use your first Hololens for? Uh, well, it didn't exist, so there's that. <laughs> <sighs> I tell you, all right, Microsoft. All right. Uh, speaking of which, let's talk about other things. Other that things. was a terrible segue. Was... That was a... <laughs> Worst segue ever. Yes. <laughs> Tennis, really. I used to play cricket. Okay, so uh, studio director of Media Molecule, uh, Siobhan Reddy, has announced that the Dreams Creator early access game will be made available this spring in limited numbers. So uh, we're getting Dreams this year. Yeah. Finally. So the early access will not have everything that the final game will have, but you'll get 100% of the same tools. Okay. So you get all the tools. Just not the content to shape and mold in Probably. The and that's going to be added uh, as time goes on. So it's providing interactive tutorials. It'll have all the... Uh, and they'll be for various skill sets and whatnot. They'll have uh, some of the Media Molecule created games, so the arcade games ready-made, so you can either play them or remix them or see how they go. Right. Uh, if you're in the beta you will have access to any of the games that you've published already. Mm -hmm. So you can go and, and play with those. They're not wiping your account, basically. Right. Exactly. 
Uh, and they're going to be adding more features, tutorials, arcade levels, and assets during the access period as they build towards the full slate at launch. So it's going to be available digitally through the PlayStation Store, and it's going to be uh, $39.99 Canadian. That's not bad, actually. Yeah. I don't know if you'll have to then buy the full game or you get a discount for the full game later or how it works. But uh, I've been waiting for this one for a while. And it looks pretty I mean, interesting. I, I've been waiting for it, cautiously waiting for it, because I didn't know exactly what it was, because they yeah. didn't even know how to market it at first. And then all of a sudden it comes out and they're like, oh, shit, you can just make full fucking games in this right. thing now. So It is literally like 3D game making Little Big Planet. Yeah. So it is crazy. It's just like, I enjoyed the shit out of Little Big Planet, but right. again, it was it was... I want to say it was limited in what you could do. You could do some amazing things with it, yep. but you had to dig deep to learn how to do a lot of those things. Yeah. Whereas this one, it sounds like this is a game-making toolkit, and you just go. Yeah, so. like I've watched a few of the playthroughs. It's actually pretty impressive, just the robustness of the tools you're given and how ease, like the ease of use you can get, even by like copying and pasting stuff that's already out there mm -hmm. and then remixing, resizing, overlapping and stuff. Yeah. It, it's amazing what you can actually get out of it yeah so uh it's crazy it'll be interesting to see how people use it because you know if you think back to what they did with little big planet people were making like defender games and calculators and shit yeah exactly like, just crazy. just mind-blowing stuff like shit that i don't even think media media molecule was even aware you could do it right so the give it give the tools to the people and they will figure out how to use them to their to their ends i'd be happy just using it as like a machinima like uh, platform yeah exactly and that's the whole thing is that was one of the original things yeah. that they they toted it for was like you can just make movies in this and i'd be happy to do that alone yeah but it'll be cool uh on the topic of... oh uh guadza says oh. that you don't even need to uh, you shouldn't need to buy the game again if you're in the early access so it's like you're you're buying in at an early access price um, and then it'll probably be after the full game just like steam does that a lot where I, if you go in early yeah. access you pay like 15 20 30 dollars then when maybe. the game comes out then you pay the 50 or 60 dollars or whatever maybe i don't know like it, it depends on the situation like sony could do that they might not i don't know but uh either way i'd be willing to pay it just to get access to it early and screw around with that yeah hmm i'm gonna go uh see if we can talk to our our, our psu connections mm. <laughs> Talk to your managing editor and see if we have a, a key for that on the way. Uh, speaking closer than you think, mm -hmm. this week an entry on Steam DB popped up and then disappeared very quickly. Okay. But of course, nothing ever dies on the internet, so everyone freaked out that this happened. It was a accidental release date, theoretically, yeah. for the Outer Worlds. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if this was an accidental leak, if it was actually the listing for it and it was not supposed to be revealed, apparently it'll be released on Tuesday, August the 6th. Oh shit, really? If that's the case, I mean that's not out of the out of the ordinary. They they've showed it off a few times. They've actually demonstrated it in motion. If you think about like Fallout, they, they showed it in like uh, July mm -hmm. and it was out in November. This could be very much the same thing. It looked complete when we saw it. I mean, yeah, it looked like it was running quite well. Yep. And it, it, it looked like it kind of had all its systems in place. But again, it was a trailer. They can tailor those things to right. make it look like a complete game. And then they say, oh, it comes out in two years or yeah, something I, like I that. Yeah, I wasn't expecting so. it that quick. Yeah. But yeah, if it is, that'd be amazing. That's impressive, especially because that one is... I think they're doing it right. Like, yep. they, they seem to have... You know, the, the fandom kind of swaying their way. Uh, they they are building that hype train slowly. They didn't just slap us in the face with a trailer. We're like, hey, get excited. This is the best thing ever and stuff like that. They're like, hey, you know what? It's kind of like Fallout, but better maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after 76 been kind of floundering. All right. We got some quick hits. Okay. Okay. Epic Game Store is giving away Thimbleweed Park. Already downloaded it. <laughs> Excellent. So did I, yeah. I, I, you know, that was actually one that when it came out, I was excited for it, but, right. you know, there was tons of other shit to play at that time. Oh, yeah. So Ron the fact Gilbert. that I, I went on the Epic Game Store and all of a sudden it was like, hey, here's your free game. I'm like, oh, fuck yes. I, I got it for free. That's awesome. Yep. No, it's great. That's uh, the guy, like the co-creator of Monkey Island, Ron Gilbert. He made Thimbleweed Park. It's yep. kind of a uh, Monkey Island, Maniac Twin Mansion. Peaks, X, uh, X Files, X Men, <laughs> X Files, Maniac Mansion kind of style of game. It's a point and click weird ass game with yeah the tongue-in-cheek sense of humor it's really cool uh at this year's writers guild of america awards uh sony exclusive god of war took the prize for best video game writing nice beating spider-man assassin's creed odyssey telltale's batman the enemy within episode five and pillars of eternity 2 dead fire 
Uh, shockingly enough, you're going to notice that Red Dead Redemption 2 is not in that list. Rockstar did not submit it for consideration. Oh, really? Yep. Interesting. Typically, with the awards like this, they have to submit uh, the game and actually pay to have it submitted. Oh, is it kind of like the Oscars then? Like you're kind of like paying to get a note and stuff kind like of, that? Like, kind of. I don't know about the Oscars yeah. if they do that, but I know in some of these, you actually have to like... It's like a twenty thousand dollar or something. It's something crazy. Twenty thousand dollars just to submit to that? Holy shit! <laughs> to be considered, so you can then say, "Oh, I was nominated." Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Hideki Kamiya, Bayonetta creator. He hints on Twitter that potentially Bayonetta might appear as a guest character in Mortal Kombat Eleven. I could, I could see that could Mortal see Kombat, that. like the the, the Nether Nether Realms. Yeah, yeah. Nether Realms. Uh, they have a lot of fun they over do. there. Like they, they have do. a lot of fun, not only with their own content, but they just love putting random extra shit in a lot of their games because I mean we've had, we've had Alien, Predator, the Ninja Turtles, yep. Hellboy, like all kinds of random shit in a lot of their different games. So yeah, they're they're no strangers to adding just interesting different characters into their into the games. Kobe Bryant, <clears throat> Shaquille O'Neal, <laughs> Larry Bird is long since retired. Good Isn't lord, he dead now <laughs> I don't think he so. isn't. He's like ninety years old or something. <laughs> Is Will Chamberlain still alive? He was like a contemporary of him. Anyway. Um, but yeah, that, that would be really interesting to see. The only thing I don't see happening, that one's kind of tricky. Because Injustice was a bit different how they ran those ones because there was no fatalities in that one. It was really brutal action, right. but they weren't fucking cutting heads off and stabbing them through the gut and stuff like sure. that. So Bayonetta in Mortal Kombat... I'm just wondering where they're going to draw the line. Is she actually going to get be able to get split in half and have her arms torn off and yeah. stuff like that? Like, who knows? It'll be interesting because again, that's one of those ones that's kind of like a Nintendo darling now. So I'm wondering if they're going to really allow that to happen. She'll collapse in a pile of hair. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll rip her arms off and it'll turn into hair. <laughs> right, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, so Dennis Dyack, he's still around. He's still kicking. Still doing stuff. <laughs> yeah, he's creating a game called Dead House Sonata. What? Dead, Dead Hoss, Hoss? H-A-U-S. <laughs> okay. It's like, I, I assume it has an umlaut. <laughs> it is a free-to-play action RPG for PC and console, and it's uh, being built on the uh, Lumberyard engine. That's Amazon's free engine. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, speaking with games, we Dayak described the gameplay as Dead House Sonata <laughs> as a mix uh, between From Software's Bloodborne mm -hmm. and Blizzard's Diablo, but it uh, differs from both of these because you're playing as the bad guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, undead of all sorts, you're feasting on the living, but also you apparently have a rivalry against other undead houses, which is where the narrative will focus. So, shockingly enough, Dennis Dyack is not working at uh, Silicon Knights anymore. Uh, He's doing... His company. Is it... It is now leading a different company. So is he still part of Silicon Knights? I have or... a feeling that Silicon Knights just kind of shoved know. him out the door. <laughs> no, no, like they, they already laid off. Like there was only him and like two other people. I think they just closed the doors down. Oh, okay. You remember they were still in that that lawsuit with uh, Epic about the Unreal Engine, right? Yeah, yeah. For the longest time, and, and I think that, that it turned against them. Mm -hmm. So legal think, fees just built up, and they were like, "Ah, fuck this." <laughs> I think they just shuttered uh, Silicon Knights and went and started a new studio. Yeah. So it's Apocalypse studios it's a new development team it's based in niagara he's uh gonna ramp up the studio size apparently over to 100 employees by 2020 and dead house sonata is currently expected to be launching some point in 2021 so yeah uh he fucked silicon knights into the ground and now he's just you know <laughs> now he's gonna look else. for that some of that sweet free-to-play type money in yeah. loot boxes i'll start holding my breath mm. now yeah 2021 Everyone... that's going to be off the radar for so long it's like you know what i might remember it by the time it comes out <laughs> well when i hear dennis dyack's name attached to it i'll play it but not for the reasons of enjoyment <laughs> it's just gonna be like i have to see this you know yeah because let me let me be frank uh, the original uh, blood omen legacy of came was good mm -hmm. and it had a great storyline and then crystal dynamics sent came and went okay let's run with that and then they made blood omen 2 <laughs> which is a silicon knights game yep and it wasn't, what's the word? It wasn't great. <laughs> Playable. <laughs> um, not the best game. It was a game. <laughs> mm. So whatever, long story short, it came to a head and, and Square Enix had it and they put out X number of games and uh, they finished off with Defiance and then they were going to do another one. And then they said, oh, this is terrible. And then they made it like a free to play multiplayer game called e Nosgoth. Yeah. And there were a lot of apologists that, you know, to their dying breath would defend that game, 
but it was awful. They just they wanted was, any content yeah. they could get in that world. Unfortunately, it was not a Soul Reaver game at yeah. all. So this is supposed to be his return to form, and I I'm looking at this going, okay. I almost kind of wish they they completely went under and they had to sell all their licenses and then someone would actually get the Legacy of Cain license and the well, you know, Sawyer Amy Hennig's not doing anything right now. I mean, it would I'm make obviously. perfect sense. <laughs> make perfect sense for her to go back and actually because again, it back. it's that's when I always I always say it's like give us a remaster, a yeah. remake, a continuation, give us something in that realm. I I want new content from sure. That. So Square Enix can bring out another Legacy of Cain game and have it not meet their targets. <laughs> and oh, why did I make this? Yeah. Unfortunately, ridiculous. Oh, um, uh, Tomb Raider, uh, the sh- uh, not Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Was it Shadow of the Tomb Raider? The third one? Uh, Rise of the- yeah, yes, Shadow of the Tomb Rise Raider was the second one. Yeah, they've only shipped four million copies of the game. Mm-hmm. It and that's like grossly undersold, according to Square. So they're upset about that. They're upset about uh, Just Cause. Just Cause significantly underperformed. Uh, didn't hurt that the PC version was like built for like massively overpowered systems yeah and it performed terribly on low-end systems so uh squaresoft is terrible for choosing appropriate targets for the games um i'm worried now like maybe kingdom hearts 3 might make it but who knows what the hell i mean i was gonna say that's that's got to help their bottom line at some point (laughs) well we'll see what happens when final fantasy 7 causes a a holy war essentially in in 2025 yeah (laughs) All right, THQ Nordic is not done sinistering up Tiny Studios. Uh, it's gobbled up another one this time. It, it is now feasting on the still warm flesh of the Kingdom Come Deliverance developer, Warhorse Studios. They bought that studio and the IP Kingdom Come that went with it for uh, the equivalent of $48 million US. Oh, okay. That's a fair amount for a tiny studio. No kidding, yeah. They're a tiny independent studio. I think they only did like two games. I, yeah, I think it was literally just the two in that in that title. I think so. So yeah, um, forty eight million dollars. So now THQ Nordic is publishing them. They're going to operate independently. I think THQ is just they they pick up these studios and they go, okay, you run yourself. Yeah. Until we come in. <laughs> I and almost imagine you. them. They were like, they're they're going to like. THQ Nordic soon is they're going to buy like uh, an unused like Olympic village and they're just going to move all the devs into like the different buildings and then they're just going to have like the big mayor house at the end of the street and they're just going to be like yes yes this is nice <laughs> load they'll, them they'll oversee everything in the one little like compound town there no they're going to uh, <laughs> load them all up on cruise ships and lash them all together in the ocean it's just going to be a big floating <laughs> so, city. so there's no laws they yeah. don't have to worry about anything just in international waters <laughs> yeah where they can code whatever they want <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. So you're a Spotify user, right? Yes. So uh, just last week, Capcom uploaded essentially all of their soundtracks yep. to Spotify. So you got uh, Monster Hunter, Street Fighter, Phoenix Wright, Mega Man, Devil May Cry, a bunch of crap. Yeah. So probably like Resident Evil. Tons stuff. of good stuff. Yeah. So you can see all of those uh, all those soundtracks on Spotify. Uh, I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but shortly thereafter, CD Projekt Red also threw up a bunch of uh, uh, Witcher 3 and Thronebreaker and oh, Gwent soundtracks as well. Cool. So they're available there too now. I wonder if that's going to be a uh, a new thing. Like, I don't know if there is a a market for developers selling soundtracks. There, There is, but it tends to be the more unique ones. Yeah. It's either like, oh, like we're Final selling, Fantasy, this, like selling this on vinyl, or it's like an indie Fuck game vinyl. that has like a really kind of unique sound to it. Or That's something. Travis speak. Well, hey, vinyl. Hey, man, that's... God, God damn it, I Travis. Wouldn't, I wouldn't speak like that because, God damn, there's a lot of people there that love their vinyl. <clears throat> yeah, well. there, There's a straight up market for video game vinyl. Sure, hipsters. <laughs> And last but not least, uh, Bethesda. They have announced their last-ditch effort to salvage Fallout 76. I won't say last-ditch, but it's their current effort to salvage Fallout 76. They're, they're next in line. <laughs> yeah. So they have a 2019 roadmap that actually has, like, uh, a spring, summer, and fall edition. And it's going to have, like, a bunch of different add-ons for uh new quests modes items there's going to be raids features events legendary uh, legendary players can do like a prestige they can like level back down and improve their character like get get additional stat bonuses oh, okay. and crap so i'm assuming their prestige system is going to let you like uh new game plus a bunch of times and make you unstoppable mm-hmm. uh and there's going to be uh, apparently even a new main quest next fall so i don't know if there's going to be like a a brand new storyline maybe with some npcs I never thought that NPCs would be like a luxury item, but yeah. <laughs> but here we are. 
<laughs> yeah. So you can check that out there on their uh, their blog. Uh, I like the the Fallout at this point. The uh, the feedback to Fallout seventy six has been critical. Um, probably not as critical as a, uh, as Anthem, but it's been pretty critical. And uh, they've had all kinds of issues with uh, you know uh, economy issues and people falling through the map and. The guy got banned for 900 hours oh, of farming. Oh, yeah, because he just had he too much duplicating. ammo. No, no, he was duplicating Oh, items. was he? Okay, he I thought it was items. just like he actually gained all that, and yeah. then they just banned him for it. Like, No, I was I was sympathizing with him until I heard that. I was like, fuck that guy. Yeah, as long as it was official that he was basically cheating, then right. yeah, fuck that guy. Yep. So, uh, it's good, though. Apparently, <laughs> discount they're to joins the... the chat at the buzzer. <laughs> oh, discount. Yeah. Well, we already <laughs> talked about ARC for this episode, so unfortunately... That's it. We, we know you're going to play it anyways, discount. It's he all right. You won't. <laughs> all right. Anything arc related, he'll fucking play it. All right. It's time for the big ticket. All right. Uh, this week, we're doing something a little bit unusual. We're moving the, the weekly PlayStation 5 rumor roundup. It is the big ticket this week because we have a couple of patents filed and some other things all put together that make for an interesting discussion topic for PlayStation 5. As long as there's enough that's going in the right direction of like, hey, this is a little more true than like, yes. oh, I heard this one guy on a forum no, no. somewhere said this. <laughs> These are based on actual patents that have been filed in Japan. So there are two patents, and there was one about a month ago, and uh, this is one that we actually had talked about, I think, on the last episode two weeks ago. And it was uh, the CPU ID impersonating patent, yes. which allowed um, uh, certain devices to be impersonated so that, like, for legacy systems. Mm -hmm. So I guess if you plug in your Super Scope 6, it'll work. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's a bad example, obviously, but your, your I don't know, what, your, your shitty Namco twisty oh, PS1 God. joystick. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, no thanks. Right? <laughs> do you remember the original PS1 that actually had, like, a two-stick flight stick? Sure do, yeah. They had a lot of weird, interesting stuff, because, again, cool. video game companies were really testing a lot of ideas out at that point. They sure were. Like, Irritating Stick. <laughs> Do you remember Irritating yes, Stick? Yes, I watched a video about it the other day, because I, I, I went by it, and I was like, why does that ring a bell? <laughs> and then it was a, like, 25-minute video about the guy playing it, and then talking about the history and, like, where it came from and why it exists. And I was like, wow, okay, <laughs> that's <laughs> a thing. <laughs> irritating Stick. Yep. Okay, so... Uh, just recently, uh, it was published last week, the 21st in, in Japan. Uh, the name of the patent is Simulation of Legacy Bus Operation for Backwards Compatibility. So this is very interesting. So what it is, it allows for uh, the CPU to emulate the essentially the function calls of another CPU. Mm -hmm. So it uh, allows for enhanced remasters or literally emulation on the fly yeah so um this is essentially what you have like when you have emulators you have a bios right and so you actually need that bios mm -hmm. instead the uh this new cpu the patent will allow it theoretically to emulate past cpus for example the ps3 or any other playstation yeah so this plus the cpu id impersonation it's leading a lot of people to basically follow up on, and, and what developers have been saying who have dev kits now, that PlayStation 5 will absolutely be backwards compatible. This says potentially not just with PS4, potentially with anything. See, and that would be an absolute killer for them. Crazy. If you can buy one system and you can play everything previous, yeah that's it like done instant buy because i have so much content to fucking play and it just sucks to have to go back and plug in multiple different consoles right to play the various games that i want to play yeah so they're saying that if this is like for the ps5 that seems obviously where this is headed yeah uh the new system will allow the ps5 to be able to imitate the behavior of the previous consoles so the information that arrives the different processors is returned in response to the calls of the games so the processor is able to detect the needs of each application and behave as if, if it was the original cpu of each machine cheating the software essentially yeah it's the same thing as a as a pc emulating right. a, a, a dreamcast or a gamecube yeah, or except whatever. instead of actually needing the bios to uh, emulate 
it actually replicates the use of that BIOS internally. Yeah. So that's Which is all Sony stuff, so right. it would make sense for them to do it that way. So two things that this opens up Sony for, which are interesting. So aside from just being able to, you know, gain access to your whole back catalog, potentially PSU, PS1 games, PS2 games, PS3 games, you also have two other things that this becomes a vehicle for. First, there was talk that they already have a, a patent for a touchscreen in place of the touchpad. Okay. So you have a visual screen. You could have it emulate Vita games. Okay. Right? So you have your screen, you have your little screen for like any touch aspect. So what you're talking about is like basically take a PS4 controller, yeah. split it in half, and stick a screen in the middle of Essentially, it. Essentially, like, I'm assu- like the the way they describe it, the screen was going to be larger. Mm-hmm. So I don't know the dimensions of the controller itself, but I picture like the touch screen just a bit, a bit like a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's so probably your your PlayStation button will be like on your touch screen, right? Now, yeah, something like that. Anyway, uh, but yeah, you have your your Vita game you could play on your big screen, but any of the touch control stuff for the Vita is all be right, right there, there. Yeah, right, which would in in turn allow any Vita games that are developed still could be on the fucking Vita <laughs> for those people who still have one. The other thing that uh, is interesting, this would allow potentially uh, PS Now to allow you to download even PS3 games and stuff like that. So you could have PSP games, PS Vita games, PS3 games, all on PS Now. Literally download everything. Literally their entire catalog. Right? So basically, your PS Now would be a much more value, like a, a bigger value proposition. Yeah. And anything you have access to already in your back catalog on your play, uh, PSN account, yeah. potentially you could download and play on your PS5. That's insane to mm-hmm. me. It really is. That would be amazing. Can you picture now, though, it would be like they could uh, build a, uh, like a little, um, like a, 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 a packaging for any of the old games. So when you download that or you have that in the, your system, it downloads like the two or three meg packaging. And this is where all the calls are for trophies and stuff. Boom, yep. your game now gives you trophies. Yeah, exactly. Just like, again, an all-in-one solution. Because that, that's one of their patents too. That's like, that's like a guaranteed buy for a lot of people. Just again, that like because everything is so digital, so cloud-based, all this uh, online-based now, we want that one-point solution. Right. And if they can pull that off that easily that's it that's the way to go that's going to be your all-in-one solution right there yeah so at the very very least we're going to see ps4 compatibility because he has still has the x86 architecture that's almost a guarantee but because it's it's previous generation it's the cross generation that would be by far the smartest thing you could do because as you go like with each generation back you go it's going to be diminishing returns because the ps3 could already play ps1 games anyways so and that... ps2 games if you got the early one oh that's right if you had the fat my, one it would do my PS2 big games. fat ps3 so yeah you have a you have a system in the middle that could already play the previous games now you have this one that could play those if it can emulate any of the other ones it's yeah, yeah you're you're basically good to go how expensive are these controllers going to be in your scenario 100 bucks well i mean right now they're like 80 bucks so yeah honestly knows? they're already 70 or 80 dollars so yeah. on what i could see happening is kind of what nintendo did with the wii u except not so locked oh, down God. so the wii u had its its gamepad which is kind of the same idea so you had your controller fixed around a screen touch screen that did all the stuff and then alternately all of the other players with uh <laughs> that would play the game they would use an old wiimote uh or i think they had a pro controller that you could get for yeah. it too dave speaks in freedom dollars only so we'll have to convert that into us <laughs> yeah or but to america what what i could definitely see them doing especially if all this stuff is going to be backwards compatible yeah and it's going to read all this other stuff and, and use previous systems and any of that that ps5 is probably going to be able to read a brand new ps5 controller with a screen on it it's going to be able to read a brand new ps5 controller without a, a screen on it mm-hmm. and it's going to be able to do a ds4 a ds3 um it won't have a plug for ps2 but i mean it emulates all that stuff anyways yeah so what it's probably going to be is they're going to offer two different controllers but first player always has to have the touch screen one and then they're going to have an alternate cheaper one Maybe. that doesn't have the screen built in i am really hoping that uh they don't split the market though because that's the problem with like the the nintendo wii u uh like if they're making games where the uh screen is going to be used it needs to be uh all of the market and it uh, unfortunately it's the the connect argument all over again right it's, it's all of the devs it's yeah. up to the devs and i all that's why i almost guarantee they are going to uh, maybe not it's not gonna be right at the start but i guarantee yeah. they are going to offer well, one without the touch screen on it the thing is though the the touchpad being blank 
doesn't really give the devs a lot to work with. You can have like very, very basic gestures. You can like track around a map. Mm -hmm. When you have uh, even a small touch sensitive screen that yep. they can program, then they can put buttons and visual uh, responses yeah. and, you know, actual and again, feedback. Yeah, really cool idea. But yeah, yeah it's going to be one of those things that's literally going to, you know, it's like, okay, I got my one pack and controller. Right. Got to wait a couple months to buy another controller because they cost, you know, $200 Canadian or something like that. I mean, like who that. knows? Like a tiny touch screen, for, like uh, in 2020, it might not be that expensive. And plus, they're going to be mass producing them too. So it's yeah. going to come down in price. Who knows? It's not like you're not going to buy a, a controller for like eight hundred dollars like it's an iphone or no something. no it just all i know right now is still if i want to go and buy a brand new ps4 right. like a, a ds4 controller canadian dollars 79.99 so it's true something with a built-in screen and more advanced tech and it's the newest thing it's gonna be more <laughs> it's still cheaper than a joy con uh or a pair of joy cons anyway yeah i guess that's true yep. yeah all right, one other patent that uh, showed up recently. Uh, they had actually patented uh, some new PSVR controllers as well. Oh, okay. And the patent, there's a couple of patents associated with this, and it says the first one is what Sony calls a sense of force presentation, which is kind of like haptic feedback. Okay. Uh, or at least that's how it's described. Oh, it's probably like the, the Joy-Con, like the really high-tech, vibration motors that actually feel like different sensations and stuff no, no, like that it's like actual force feedback when you're like if you if you're uh like moving the thing it'll actually fight you a little bit depending on the movement yeah and stuff. so it, ha it has like a, a, a gyro that will kind of yeah kind of who knows throw it in the other direction the other patent is a uh system by which the controller can detect whether it's in your left or right hand oh that yeah would be nice. and it apparently has some uh some kind of ability to sense finger positioning and motion as well. So whatever the heck the system is. We're already seeing a lot of that with yeah. the Oculus and the Vive. So it's just the natural progression of things. And it's going to like naturally remap the buttons based on which hand it's in and whatnot. Yeah. So I, I guess it, at the very it's, least... It's pretty easy to tell where your thumbs are. So yeah. the controller should be able to pick that up. <laughs> <laughs> if your thumbs bend the other way, you've got bigger issues. Yeah, exactly. Right. So... That'll be interesting to see. Uh, just the fact that you have like haptic feedback and controllers in VR, that could be a big thing too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's a lot of uh, random PS5 rumors, considering it's still like a year out. Uh, there's people I mean, saying that's usually when the rumor mill starts really stewing because they're officially like legally writing these oh, things well, now. So yeah, but there's also so many like false rumors out there. It's no, but I mean like when they're filing shit and everything like that. That's that's not hearsay. Yeah. That shit that's actually happened. So. Oh, you say that now. <laughs> well, All right, not, they're not gonna claw that back. <laughs> you know what time it is? Yeah, let's do it. We got 13 minutes. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> time to press select on the options menu. Ah, uh, yes, it's 10 minutes too, so the contest has officially closed. So you're gonna, are you going to be able to tell that right now, or are you just going to oh, announce I, it I on will, Twitter? No, I will pull the pull the name at the end of the show, and okay. I will uh, put it out. So we will do that very last. Okay. So every week, we have a rotating series of topics that we discuss. Uh, this week, we're going to be discussing one of our favorites called Steal This Idea. This is a uh, part of the show that we like where we have a game that we would like to see made, and because we don't code and we play games, we're going to go... Hey, developers, take our idea. Go make this game. And if you do it and you do it well, then we will let you have that idea for free. But if you fuck up and you make a bad game, we're coming for you. We're going to sue your ass. We're going to take all your fucking money. So, steal this idea. <laughs> Hashtag learn to code. I wish. Hashtag learn to code. You know, believe me, there are days where it's like, fuck this. <laughs> Uh, there, there have been a couple games I've looked at lately that I did not do a review for, and mm. it was a kindness. <laughs> so, let me yeah. just say. In any case, we banned on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, as tradition, you go first. Okay. And because I still have to think of an idea. <laughs> really? You're down to the last minute, huh? You know me. I function well under pressure. Oh, yeah. Well, normally we, we, you know, put our ideas out to kind of any dev that wants to get their hands on them. This one, Are I'm you talking to you. Somebody? I'm talking to you, Nintendo, directly, okay? Uh, because you fucked up your last game in this one, and uh, I'd really like to see some more good content out of this license. Mm. And that license is Star Fox. Okay. So Star Fox Zero. Star Fox Adventures um, 2. Uh, well, okay, so... Not so much that. Okay, so the problem with that one is it was fucking Star Fox on Dinosaur Island. Like, that was literally what the game was, and it was really, really unfortunate. Terrible. Star Fox Zero was not great either, because they chose some really awkward, weird camera controls and some really 
just strange gameplay and a really nonchalant story, and it was mm-hmm. just it wasn't good. It just was not what a Star Fox game should be. So, Nintendo, knowing that you like to do different things with what you're working with, uh, this idea just came straight out of Kingdom Hearts 3, actually, with the gummy ship stuff. Okay. So, I enjoyed that part of the game so much, and it was so akin to what a, an old classic like Star Fox game felt like, that I want Nintendo, because they don't, don't do the Adventure Planet, don't do any ground missions or anything like that, I want a game where your leader, it, it, so it's in the future, your leader is an old, haggard Star Fox, and he's like the big corporal like leader of the squad now, and you have a young like ragtag band of, of guys behind you, and okay. you get to build your own like modern like uh like future tech version of the R wings, okay, and upgrade them and change like change how they look and change them for missions and stuff, a la kind of like armored core. So if you're going to a heavy mission, you want like more armor, bigger guns, mm-hmm. stuff like that, or you want like a lighter, more dexterous ship and whatnot. But do that, but in a more not so much open world, but like a hub and spoke where you can kind of head in any direction. Whereas before, on the classic Star Fox games, it was kind of you started at one point, and then depending on what you did in each level, it would send you, like, one of three routes or one of four routes or whatever. So in this one, you start on, you know, Corneria or something, like, just on a core planet, Mm -hmm. and you can just go outwards. And you can realize pretty quick that, oh, I shouldn't go in this direction because that place is fucked right now. (laughs) Or you get there just in time to, to save them, and all of a sudden you get bonuses and boosts and money or, you know, get certain parts. But if they get fucked up, that stuff is locked off, and then you may have to get it somewhere else, or you may just not get it for that playthrough. Okay. So I don't want it to be a big, epic, like, 40-hour game. I want it to be one that you can still play through, but you can play through it many, many times in many, many different ways. So just like you would play the original Star Fox, you had three paths, and you could interconnect some of those planets from time to time to... You still get the same ending, but you get kind of a different path every time. So this one, you could fly out in fucking, like, you know, 10 or 12 different directions... And then out from there, it could kind of fork from there. And so you it would give you so much replayability into yeah. how you built things, which team members you had, which direction you went in, okay. and what order you did everything in. So this is like your Star Fox answer to like Logan. Logan? Like Logan with Wolverine. What a... Because Star Fox is old, he's grizzled. Oh, it's a okay. team, new yes. team. It's like I'm too old for this. Yeah, shit. yeah. So basically, like that. Okay. So, so yeah, he's he, you know he's the grizzled war vet now. He's you know he knows what he's talking about. He's just a bit of an asshole now because he's Andros you know, killed my whole team, and now yeah. I can't fly anymore. So no, it's up to you. <laughs> Except for that slippy asshole, no one ever liked him. <laughs> <laughs> Take the marbles out of your mouth, slippy. Yeah, and. uh... So, oh yeah, d- discount actually points to like Star Star Fox meets No Man's Sky. Not so much because because No Man's Sky is very much about like planet exploration and stuff like that. I want this one to feel very much like a classic Star Fox title. Sure. So I want everything to take place in a ship because in space. around the core part of well, it can be on planets, but you're flying along the sure, planet sure, sure. surface and fighting bosses and stuff. Because I want that focus to be very much on the ship and the weapons and and the squad that you choose to go with you on each mission. I want it to focus completely around that. So don't, like, no ground missions. I don't even, don't even build a landmaster. Like, you don't even have to build a fucking tank or a submarine or whatever. Sure. Just focus on building, like, a badass R-Wing for the various missions that you go on. Well, there were, like, R-Wing missions where you were, like, skimming over the terrain and stuff and, like, uh, you know, buildings and crap would fly by and stuff. Yeah, no, that's that's what I mean. Okay. Like, have some in space, have <clears> some <throat> on planets and stuff, but landmaster was literally you were an r-wing tank you were on the ground rolling around and everything and they had submissions and all that weird stuff see i thought tron was saying one thing which was cool he said throw some rogue galaxy in there for good reason which is like the level five oh game. yeah <laughs> like wow that would be kind of cool but then he said uh no he meant yeah, rebel, rebel galaxy rebel not Gal- rogue. yeah like, so which is also pretty cool a, a little a little bit like that except yeah. instead of you know a dreadnought you have your squad with you and you're, you're customized and whatnot i'm actually looking forward to playing the sequel to rebel and galaxy it, this year too and it needs to have shipbuilding that is the key factor because the gummy ship is again like kingdom hearts 3 like the gummy ship stuff that stuff just kicked ass i fucking love that part of the game because you can customize your ship and your weapon loadout from the ground up in any formation you want it builds within like a limit of course but 
it was just one of the most fun parts, yep. and you can build it for various different missions and different boss fights and stuff. Old man Janus Marine is rocking on his uh, veranda and complaining that you're talking about gummy <laughs> ships again. But that's the whole thing. It's it, Gummy ships is kind of the blueprint for the much better yep. Star Fox game that I want Nintendo to make. Every time I turn around, it's either Kingdom Hearts or Riverdale. <laughs> got a point yeah so that that's it that's the game that i would love to see because uh nintendo the last couple star fox outings they've had haven't been great so i'd love right. to see that game come back because star fox is definitely one of my favorite licenses that they have i can see that so, yeah there you go cool all right so what do you got did, did I, you did you think of anything i <laughs> did but i think like i've got a list of ones that I, I, I i've discussed in the past i don't know if i ever talked about this one there was an idea i had for a post-apocalyptic uh kind of a a, a salvage style game like it, it was it's half uh mecha and half survival game oh okay it's, it's kind of similar to uh the gundam x presentation I, now that i'm saying this i think i have talked about this one if it was it was long fucking time I mean, ago that's true like going back a long ways like the f-zero rpg that was yeah. like one of our very first <laughs> yeah. steal this Fallout ideas. 76 it's out already jack <laughs> Fallout 76 no 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 <laughs> No, okay, so uh, Gundam X, for example, specifically, aside from the, the whole moon and the laser and the whole bit, in concept, it was this post-apocalyptic land ship, and they had a number of these uh, mobile suits that were basically like, cobbled together. And uh, essentially, it was these, these roving gangs of what they called vultures, and they were like salvaging technology and rebuilding these things, and they would sell them, and that's how they made their livelihood. Okay. So uh, they would build up like mercenary crews and they would go on missions and stuff. And essentially, because they were all mobile suits of various types, um, as they uh, got into battle and they killed some enemy mobile suits, you would be able to, uh, like, uh, what is it, Gundam Breaker, you get parts. Except yeah. It's not just like, oh, look, you know, click them all together uh, yeah. like Legos. It's not, it's not a gun plug game. No. It's a, no, more no. realistic. <laughs> right? So uh, the more, it, it, I want to take sort of the same uh, concept as they have in the Battletech game, the most recent tactical Battletech right. game on PC. Yeah. So uh, the more uh, output of damage you do, the more likely that you are to defeat your enemy, but the less like there's going to be anything left to salvage. Yeah. And the more you commit, the more money it's going to cost to like, rearm and stuff. So it becomes all about the, the economy of war as well as the, the actual act of war. You want, like when you get into a fight, you want to right. knock them out. You don't want to kill them. <laughs> yeah, and you can't overcommit. Otherwise, then you can't uh, afford to like rearm or to... If you take too much damage and repair, right? Yeah. Your main mechs are out of uh, battle. So it's, it's all a balancing about, act. Right. So it's all about uh, doing enough damage to them that you can still salvage them, but not mm -hmm. taking as much damage. Otherwise, you're, you, you won't have mechs left to fight in. Yeah. So something like that, bring it to this post-apocalyptic environment where if you like kill a guy you can like salvage a leg and like attach them and each leg or each limb will have different uh, statistics and whatnot like armored core does mm -hmm. so you can mix and match them and then you'll get these like weird frankenstein i was gonna say some really funky right. looking machines <laughs> yeah so you get like really like cobbled together crappy things and uh it's only when you get better equipment like if you like specifically get lasers or something you can like try to do like posit like uh, uh precise damage to take out a component right you have like a beam saber you right. can if you do it right you slice the arm clean off something and then like that you can just take that There's yeah so there are weapons that are uh for like precision attack to like uh make your your uh enemy drop components in better shape but it's less overall damage so you're gonna probably absorb more damage it's like the whole trade-off aspect yeah so something like that and make it like not a tactical game, although that would be cool. <laughs> In hindsight, that would be very cool. But uh, make it actually shit. Make it like a front mission game. Front mission, but in a, I don't uh, know. I'm I'm a fan of third person myself, so I, would I mean I like that, that too. But... <laughs> I like that too. But now I'm thinking about this, having played SteamWorld Heist. Both of them. Yeah, I mean you could do both. Do tactical, yeah. and you can dive into any suit that's active right. in battle, and then actually take it over. And actually, I was playing um, Space Hulk Tactics, which mm. was like the, it's not a sequel, but it's like uh, a different play on Space Hulk where you can swap between first and third point of right, view, yeah. and you have action cards and stuff, so it's like, it really changes the feel of it. Uh, something like that, 
you could easily go back and forth and play it like a first person point of view, like Ring of Red, and then you know get the the fifty thousand foot view and play it like a like a tactical RPG. Yeah, you could do it that way. I don't, it doesn't matter. My fictitious game. Can be, <laughs> yeah, sure. That's a feature now. Fictitious game. That works. Matter. So, but it'd be, it would be cool, like, uh, to be able to, uh, like, cobble together your guys and send them out in combat and have to worry, like, uh, making the economy part of your strategy really changes the way you approach battle and play the game. If you're just going out there and going, ah, blah, 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 and then, you know, oh, I came back with, like, 2% health and my thing will be ready by the next mission. Yeah. No problem. Arms blown off, head blown <laughs> off. Yeah. You come back and your, your mechanic's like, yeah. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> yeah, that'd be fine, right? So you see that too much in games. This way, you have to think about your approach. You have to think about... It's like, a risk-reward. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I think that'd be interesting. But specifically in this post-apocalyptic environment, because there are no huge amounts of replacements, there is no military backing you up. It's not just they're going to hand you another jet and off you go. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. I would absolutely play that. I mean, anything that's like fucking mech based, I'm I'm down. <laughs> mech based tactics these days. I'd like to see another front mission game. Trying to steal this idea, of Borderlands Three. <laughs> I I I'm not sure, but I think someone's working on that. Pretty you, sure Pitchford. Just, just hang in there. I'm I'm sure it'll come out. Someone will listen to that. Yep. <laughs> what was yours? Uh, sorry, it. it's not. I it must have been up it in the must chat. Have scrolled. There, I didn't see Jay Tanuki's, which was yours. Can yeah. You copy it back in. Steal this idea. Half-Life 3? No, not going to happen. Discount, sorry. Doesn't exist. Half-Life sucks. <laughs> Fight me. <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much for joining us. This is our show for tonight. We are going to draw for that copy of Stellaris PS4 console edition. <laughs> uh, just want to tell everyone who's in the chat... Uh, if this is your first time watching us, if you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe down at the bottom. If you're watching us live on Twitch, please follow us up top. Uh, if you want to respond back to us, give us any feedback, let us know what you think. Reach out to us on Twitter at digital underscore fiasco. We love to hear what you think, even if you're a big fan of Half-Life, which sucks. <laughs> don't, don't say that. You're going to make people angry. Right, we're, well, they don't know the joke, right? <laughs> I'll, I'll play Half-Life and finish Half-Life 2 when, you know... And I have played the original Half-Life, so that's not what I meant. I mean, I'll finish Half-Life 2 when Half-Life 3 is even in development. You're just being a dick about it. <laughs> well, I mean, there's, there is no rush. It is still, Why commit myself? It is still worth playing, yeah. even though the third one doesn't exist and yeah. never will. Uh, I, I got things to play. <laughs> I got things to play. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go over. I'm going to draw to see uh, who you, win. You go draw the name. Oh. I'm going to talk about Jason Uki steal this idea because I think oh, it's, a, it's a glorious idea um, because it's actually based on one of my favorite Disney movies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Treasure Planet is actually one of my favorite Disney movies, and uh, JT Nuki brought up the idea of a Treasure Treasure Planet space exploration space pirate game, which I could absolutely see working, just because just take I'm. Things, it's an infinite universe. Yeah, exactly. Like you, you could take kind of that that gummy ship concept. You build your own spacefaring pirate ship kind of thing, and you go to different planets. You explore, and you can like you know steal gold you can you know find artifacts and relics and whatnot and uh i think that'd be an absolute blast and because treasure planet really has its own kind of unique look and feel to it and everything like that i think it would really set itself apart from a game that kind of borrows like the same mechanics but it would look like a disney movie well also too because because square and you know the kingdom hearts property and disney already has the gummy ship part as far as that whole from from kingdom hearts 3 with that space exploration part of it where you're sort of just in an open area and there's all these different encounters and like well, there's literally and different everything. planets also you can go to. i don't know if you caught this because you're a big tra fan of treasure planet easter egg of the treasure orbs that's literally oh, yes. the orb yeah the orb that they're carrying around like throughout all of treasure planet looks like identical to the treasure orbs just, that are in Kingdom Hearts 3. Just about a million times bigger than... Just, like, <laughs> massive, massive. But you could take that yeah. and, like, take the gummy ship aspect, even, like, the building of it, and, like, make your own little, like, pirate Absolutely. ship kind of thing. And have, like, your own little, like, yeah. crew and... And Rue, too. It's really unfortunate that, uh, that you're saying that. Have you played Kingdom Hearts 3? Because the the gummy ships, there's so much more to do compared so, to the previous it games. It is so much better. Because I, I wasn't a fan of the gummy ship 
aspect in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, I would always look for ways to kind of like nerf the system just so I could avoid it. So like Kingdom Hearts 1, I would make like the tiniest like single block gummy ship and like hide away in the corner and just coast through everything. And then the second game, I, we did like the big like donut, the donut ship. So nothing so could hit everything you. <laughs> shot through the middle of it and you could just shoot around and never get hit by anything. I would just avoid them at all costs. But the version that they've done in Kingdom Hearts 3 you can, if you don't like the battle part, you can avoid it like entirely except for like key bosses that you need to encounter. And even then they make them at least like relatively simple enough where you can kind of just like shoot a, shoot a bullet storm and go. You're getting booted out. <laughs> it's the end of the show. We have a winner, apparently. Was she talking about Riverdale yeah. or Kingdom Hearts again? <laughs> River Hearts, Kingdom Dale. <laughs> Kingdom Dale, I'd watch that show. Kingdom Dale 5. All right. You don't have a console, you're not buying Oh, well, there you go, so don't even worry about it. <laughs> They'll have to come to PC. I'll start holding my breath now. Yeah, exactly. All right, so we have a winner. Congratulations to Courtney Y. from Santa Barbara, California. You have a copy of Stellaris for PS4. We're going to reach out to you, send you a mail. Uh, you got 48 hours to claim it. Otherwise, we're going to, like, pick someone else. <laughs> Collusion rigged. Collusion rigged. No, How no does th this is, it's done through a website. It picks its own things. How so. does that make sense? Yeah. Rigged, because I, I have a, like a big contingent of friends in Santa Barbara, California. <laughs> we know so many people there. Yes, as evinced by my <laughs> lovely tab. <laughs> Every contest I don't win is rigged. Oh. Yep, that's the law. <laughs> I think he's, uh, here's the thing. Over the weekend, I played a little bit of Red Dead Redemption multiplayer, yep. and uh, Tron happened to be in the room, and uh, he created a guy that he, he says looks like Donald Trump, but it looked more like uh, sort of a, 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 a fat kind of, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, the guy who, who played the, the, the original Punisher, like the original Punisher. Oh, Dolph Lundgren? Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> he looks he like a blonde, fat Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> That's awesome. And he, he, he always looked greasy. <laughs> and here's the thing. Just the, sweaty and greasy. And the thing that made him laugh more than anything else was that you get on your horse, he'd just get on behind you. Everywhere you went. <laughs> just, he had his horse. Just to make but, things awkward. Right. They're just and he just laughed the whole time, <laughs> funniest damn thing. So after a while, I just like I, I threatened like next time it happens, I'm just gonna aim for the cliff and dive yeah, off. We're both going over, right? Just Thelma and Louise right yeah. off the goddamn edge. All right, everyone, thank you very much for joining us for Digital Fiasco episode 58. Uh, we are going to be signing off for tonight. Please stick around, though. We're going to send the uh, host out to one of our friends and Shinzi. Uh, we'll raid them and we'll put a raid message in there. We'll let you know in a couple seconds. But uh, if you want to stick around for that, I appreciate it. Otherwise, tomorrow we will going to have the second episode of Four Jerks Yelling. And let me tell you, we have solved our, our issues. Okay. Our <laughs> issues are solved. <laughs> solved. We have a, a much better uh, a video conferencing system now. We're going to be talking with uh, some of our PSU friends. Bring them all together. and We're going to talk about uh, environmental storytelling and specifically how Gary hates Bioshock. And <laughs> well, I guess that, that's a good blend there because one yeah. is very much atmospheric storytelling. One of the most, you know, highly rated, well-respected game series of all times. He's like, eh. I'm like, it, it's not for everyone, man. You got to understand, people like different games. Well, Four Jerks Yelling is not a place where you talk about facts. <laughs> it's where you argue with belief. And it's, you know, we're just going to yell at each other for couple hours yeah it's gonna be good we'll talk about deus ex we'll probably talk about things like you know gone home or whatnot environmental storytelling culminating in me telling him how he's wrong about bioshock <laughs> all yeah. right all right so tomorrow that is seven central time join us for four jerks yelling and we're gonna be talking about environmental storytelling till then uh thank you all for watching uh we are of course digital fiasco i'm jack mcbastard and i'm dandroid and we will see you guys next time uh courtney y once again thank you for playing you have a copy of stellaris ps4 console edition and we will see everyone later have a good night see ya <laughs>